and good evening, good evening, good evening. And um, good evening. And good evening. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the day we have been waiting for. It's the uh, 31st of December. And I, I am wondering, because just like, you know, yesterday, it was um, 31st of December 2022. And I keep asking people, you know, I mean, come on, what happened with time? What happened? What's going on? Why is the time running so fast? So, so, so fast. I think at the end of the day, you know, the calendar just ran by. I must say the calendar ran by. And um, we're here again. It's another 31st of December. And this is actually unique because it's on a Sunday. Yes. On a Sunday, we had service in the morning. And now we're having to prepare for the watch night service for the year 2023. In fact, I am just awesome. It's just been awesome. It's been amazing, an amazing and exciting and eventful year for us here as a church and as individuals, I believe. So as like Precious rightly said, when was it 31st December 2022? We are already here, 31st December 2023. In fact, it's been amazing. So please, if you're watching us, wherever you're watching us from, Instagram, YouTube, um, Facebook. Facebook, yes, Facebook, just send in your comments. Tell us where you're watching from. We are sure to acknowledge you. Tell us, have you already gotten to the new year? I know that there are some people yes. who have already seen yes. 2024 so, um, before Australia us. Australia and Asia would be, especially Australia, they'll be very, like be nine hours new ahead. Year. Yeah, they should be yeah. in the new year now. So tell us what's happening. Perhaps they can tell us what's happening in 2024. Already, uh, already. right? <laughs> <laughs> what's happening in 2024? Just tell us what's going on in the world in 2024 because mm -hmm. we are still in 2023. Yeah. So. We're still in 2023 at the end of the day. But then wherever it is that you are, I think one thing that is significant with crossing over into the next year has mm -hmm. to do with, you know, going to church, celebrating church. Some persons, you know, are in their houses, train all over the knockouts and all of all those things. And if you're in that kind of area, um, I hope you get to sleep anyways. <laughs> yes, but even talking about fireworks, one needs to be very careful. careful. Those things yeah. are actually dangerous. You know, we need to be careful how we use fireworks and all that. Don't use them in church if you're, if you're going to be going to church anytime soon. But if you're watching us from home, please stay safe. I know the noises will disturb you by the time it clocks 12 midnight, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, just make sure you enjoy the euphoria of being alive to see 2024 by the grace of God. And for those of you who have a habit of running into church by 11.55, <laughs> don't do it today. <laughs> Today, actually come to church on time and attend service. Um, don't, don't be the kind of person who goes to a party and then run into church by 11.55 just to be under the covering. God is merciful, but you can also change and do something differently today. Mm. So I saw your post online, you know, today, and the person was talking about the fact that there's something about you crossing over, coming to church, you know, committing your year into God's hands, that there's something about it, it makes, you know, there are always challenges, there are always difficulties that we get to face, but then the fact that we have committed our year into God's hands, at the end of the day, he guides us through whatever challenge it is that we get to face. So this is more like us coming to commit our 2024 into God's hands, you know, telling him to direct us and to help us through our 2024. Yes. And I think I've already seen someone online, or Seruna Uribiri, says, yeah, it's going to be an exciting year for me in 2024. Amen. Lord, I trust you. Amen. Amen. And that's what we are all Amen. expecting. Amen. Yes, definitely we're all expecting that it's going to be a year of... Um, I'm sure a number of friends are expecting it to be a year of abundance. But, you know, we've had a number of messages here. And even as a church, we've gone through a whole lot. And the one thing our senior pastors, Pastor Jimmy, as well as Pastor Tulu, will always tell us, so it's even mentioned today, that no matter what it is that you're going through, no matter what it is that the challenge might be, God is faithful. God is good. So the only thing that we can do as believers is to still challenge God on his word. You know, challenge him. Tell him this is what the situation yeah. is. And he's faithful. We, are, we, we can be in our rest even though we have all of all these challenges happening. But then we can be in our rest. So at the end of the day, just like Pastor said today, abide. 
Abide, Abide. 2024. Yes. Abide. And I think it was Pastor Tosin who said earlier, which, which I thought was very important that people should also know. Um, instead of just coming to commit your year to the hands of God, she was saying that we are going to receive um, instructions, that we yes. should pay attention yes. to every word from the senior pastors. Very important. Mm. That we are going to receive instructions. I think that mm -hmm. that's very important that you also prepare to receive instructions. But as, as you, um, for our online community, tell us where you're watching from mm -hmm. and then also tell us your expectations for the year 2024. Um, what's your greatest heart desire for 2024 and what do you want God to do for you in 2024? Yes, I have Jide Chuku Iguanugo. I hope I pronounced your name right. Please forgive me if I didn't. Jide Chuku Iguanugo. He says here, I just want to thank God for keeping me and my family alive from January to December. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. So I think wherever it is you're watching us from, you can join us live on Facebook, Fountain TV. You can at the Fountain of Life Church on Facebook. You can join us um, on YouTube, Fountain TV. You can also join us on Instagram. That's TFOLC, so the Fountain of Life Church on Instagram. So let's engage. Drop your comments where you're watching from. And also, you know, whatever it is you want to tell us, we're ready to listen. Am I'm I already excited. That we I saw someone here. <laughs> I've seen someone here who's already crossed over into 2024. Oh, that's Japan. nice. Oh, that's yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They yeah, she's crossed. watching from Japan. She says we've already crossed over and it's 3 a.m. there. Interesting. Wow. Congratulations, Cordelia. We'll meet you in 2024. <laughs> so let's say Happy New Year to Cordelia. Happy, Cordelia. happy New Year to you, Cordelia. Yes, you, by the time it's 12 uh, a.m. here, we're, we're hoping that you also wish us wish us happy. Yes, year. and, and so thank you for joining us at 3 a.m. Yes. Exactly. Yes, thank at you. 3 a.m. Really, you should be thank sleeping. You. But yes. thank you so much for joining us at 3 a.m. Yes. Very thank important. Thank you, Cordelia. Yes. And we have Queen Oluwadia from Portacot. Gladness Addition also says, Hola, wherever you're watching from Gladness, let us know. Thank you. Yes, pressure to have some persons who have. Yes, so people are joining um, on, on Instagram. I can mm -hmm. see... Um, Mama T's, she's joining, that's Pastor Jimmy's um, Instagram. Um, okay. Ayomi has joined. We have um, Adiola has joined. Um, just over 40, some, over 40 people have joined, just waiting in anticipation of, you know, of the service. Service starts officially at 8, but it's interesting that people are already joining, mm -hmm. um, even at 7 already. And you know what it is? We're always here for the online community. Exactly. That is why we're here at this time. We're here for you. Definitely carrying you along for you to have a feel of everything that's happening live here in the Fountain of Life Church. But then we're all here to be in God's presence to cross over into 2024. Absolutely. Gladness. Additional says, watching from Abuja. I'm grateful for finishing the Nigerian Law School and knowing that my result next year will be a first class. Amen. 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 Red congratulations. Scroll and a good job mm. with good Amen. pay. Amen. 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 Cheers Amen. to a wonderful 2024 Amen. coming up. Yes. Oh, wow. That was that was interesting. I mean, that was an achievement, mm -hmm. a milestone achievement for Agnes in 2023 to finish law school. Law school is not easy. I've not. At I didn't all. go to law school, but I know that those who went through law school, um, always talk about how difficult it is. So to go mm. through it. Uh, congratulations to you. That congratulations. Was congratulations. Congratulations, yes. Gladys. Um, I have Oluyemi Ajuan. Greetings, Fountain News crew. I'm watching from North Holt, London. I'm also grateful to God for being such an awesome help to me and my family in 2023. I praise him for his goodness and tender mercies. All right. Yes, we're still expecting. I've not seen anybody's comment on Facebook. I don't know what's going Facebook on. Facebook people, <laughs> you are still sending your comments. Don't tell me you guys are sleeping. <laughs> No. In terms of comment, we will give it to the YouTube community. <laughs> yes. YouTube Fountaineers are the uh, ones who really comment. Sincerely. Um, and then you follow that with the Instagram Fountaineers oh, and mm -hmm. the Facebook. Yes. But YouTube, you have to give no, it to No, but you guys do not have to paint it like that. Now, you can make it look <laughs> well, like we're Facebook is coming tell, last. We're trying to tell our Fountaineer member, Fountaineers on Instagram to at least, you know, <laughs> yes, wake you up know, and then, you know, it's, it's a competition YouTube now. Is winning, so winning. Facebook, <laughs> don't sleep. Wake up. You know, you know when they say Juma soon, this is the time. <laughs> you know what, my YouTube co um, um, online community, I would appreciate if you give yourselves a round of applause. I want to see your clapping emojis here. Yeah. Uh -uh. Yes, because I don't know. Why, because why, they are really... Why, why does it feel like you're pride right now? There's some regulars. No, it's true. And yes. there's some, so there are some regulars as well. Yeah. Um, people like King T are regulars. Um, Okundi is a regular. Okay. Oh. There are some names that have noticed who are regulars. They comment every every Sunday, Sunday every mm -hmm. service, every, every service. Sunday, every service. Thank you so much and for joining so in all the time. Regular. Yes, they always comment. Thank commenting. you. Thank you. 
All right, so let's talk about the year. Mm. Um, it's been, of course, 12 months. <laughs> yes. It is, it is, it's not less or more. Um, it's been 12 months of, you know, it's been an eventful year. Mm -hmm. um, as a been. church and as individuals. As a nation. As a, as a nation. As a nation has yes. been one of the most mm -hmm. eventful year. Um, we've had elections. We've mm -hmm. had... Uh, um, Different authorities, authorities now pulling into we, we have debt. We've had, you know just achievements even as a nation it's it's been it's been an eventful year you know the good the bad the ugly but in all you know we can say god that has god has been faithful, faithful. yes it's indeed a year of the holy spirit i was saying to someone i don't know how people who are not christians do it because Sincerely. It's, it's 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 jesus mm -hmm. that keeps you together mm -hmm. it's jesus that helps you make you know meaning of how difficult it can get sometimes through the um, petrol subsidy removal and how, wow. uh, you know, That's the price of fuel, story. the price of food items. And some people are wondering, you know, it's been a difficult year in, in that regard. But, you know, God has kept us through. Mm -hmm. He has been faithful. He has sustained us. Yes. He has put food on our table. He has protected us. Even the year where we had so much insecurity, but God has been faithful. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's true. There's something Pastor Jimmy Odukoya usually says about what he just talked about now, saying that, we are not dependent on the economy of this country, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. That's not who or what we are dependent on. Dependent on. We are actually depending on God, you know? So God is the main person. God is the one who is keeping us mm -hmm. in spite of what is happening in the country, in spite of the economy, in spite of the economic situation. People may be saying, you know, when the Bible says, some will say there's a casting down, but we, we will say, say there's, a lifting, there's a lifting up. And I want to believe 2023, God has lifted up so many who have put their trust in him. And it will only get better and better come 2024. Yes. Yeah, so Absolutely. talking about, um, you know, the challenges and all of all that, you know, this year, it's been a year where, um, yes, Pastor Taiwo will always tell us, you know, that uh, the pastor of the church is the Holy Spirit. But aside from even telling us that the pastor of the church is the Holy Spirit, he will always reiterate it. I can remember December 31st, um, 2022, when he made the announcement that this is going to be the year of the Holy Spirit. He kept on emphasizing on the fact that we need to depend on the Holy Spirit to direct us. And when you mention the fact that you don't know how those who are not Christians do it, I want to believe that as Christians, one person, that has really helped us. I do one person. <laughs> I really, but then the Holy Spirit, yes, yes, has been the one who has been able to sustain all of us. If you ask every individual who is listening right now, or probably even those seated in this auditorium, they will have one thing or the other to say about how their 2023 has been, and even some of the challenges that they went through. But I want to believe if you're a fountainer, you must have walked with the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit directing you on how to go about it, giving you instructions, and then following the those instructions. All right, so I just wanted to answer um, official T.D. Ba Basam. He's asking when um, service starts officially. It starts at 8 p.m. officially. Nigerian time. Nigerian time. It depends on where you're watching from. And then in Dima, Dima um, Innocent says, God has been faithful. Indeed, yes. God has, has been faithful. God has been faithful. Talking about the year of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we are still in the year of the Holy Spirit. We just have a couple of hours left to cross over into a new year. And I want to ask our online community, whether you're watching from Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, wherever. I want to ask a question and I want you to send in your answers. Can you remember the themes for each month in the year of the Holy Spirit? Mm. That is tasking one. It is, I must say. <laughs> I'm sure everybody will just, we ask people to just go with the month of abundant gifts because that's the one that a lot of people can want everybody. I think September, was, October was new beginning. Yes, yes. Was, new was new beginning. beginning. For me, I remember April, it was a month of commanding praise. That I remember very well. Mm. The one I know that, you know, stuck to my head is January and February. I think that was the, both of them were the months of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Because it, it, it went with the theme of the year, it, it stayed in my head. Both of them were months of the Holy Spirit. And July actually was supernatural breakthrough for July. That was what yes. July was. Yes, yes. And, um... Yes, we had glorious encounter as well for yes. November, glorious encounter. And um, this was during that period, you know, um, it was like we were transiting into another phase um, as a fountain of life. Uh, and that was when we started with um, the new theme beginning. for October, new beginning. And then, you know, we 
went down until now, which is a month of abundance gift. Yes. Um, are we not giving out too much expo to our online I community? I think we want them <laughs> we to send almost them we see. Yes. <laughs> we actually asked them to Maybe list they it. should send it. Whatever you can comments. remember. So we didn't mention some of them. Yes. yes. So which March, the, we didn't mention March, April. You mentioned April. April was... We didn't mention June. We mentioned April. April's commanding praise. So we didn't we mention didn't June. June. Mm -hmm. So we still have some months we haven't mentioned. Um, so please send in your comments. Tell us the months and what the themes were, if you remember. Yes, and, and the month that actually stood out for you in terms of the theme. Yes. Because sometimes, you know, um, we don't pay attention to the theme. We just hear it and then we mm -hmm. move on. But which of them did you really see? And I know God was faithful all through the month. Of course, that's why we're all through, yeah, that's why we're here. But the particular theme that stood out for you and why, also share that with us. Yes, I see some people have already sent in comments. Somebody here says, uh, okay, gladness says, I walked with the Holy Spirit in my exams. I literally had God. I had partnership with the Holy Spirit, and I'm so grateful to God. Then Oluyemi Ajuwan says, God is faithful indeed and so loving. In 2024, I look forward, okay, I look forward to these and to have a closer walk with God, hmm. knowing him better. So I just wanted to say that if you're a fountainer, I mean, your relationship with the Holy Spirit should be better this year. Yes. Or should have been better this, this year. year. It should, it should, I mean, it, it reflects, even in, the, even in the atmosphere, if you're in church, yes. you will see that, look, um, there, is that, there is that hovering of the Holy Spirit. It's really a year of the Holy Spirit. And for, as individuals, I think that, you know, for us, our relationship with the Holy Spirit has, has gotten better, if just because of that theme and how yes. we focused. And yes, um, just like I mentioned, Pastor Taiwo made it a point of duty to keep emphasizing yes. it. Every month, he kept emphasizing on it. And you know, there is really no sermon that he preached through till, um, I think, April. There was no sermon he preached that he didn't lay emphasis on, on the, the fact Spirit. that the Holy Spirit is the only one who can direct us. The Holy Spirit is the only one who can teach us and guide us. And you know, at the end of the day, when Jesus came and um, he was ascending into heaven, he told us that he's going to be self sending us a helper. And then we have spoken about the fact that the Holy Spirit is not just even our helper, he's our comforter, he's our teacher. He, has, he, he operates in different dimensions, you know, with us, depending on how we just want him to function in our life part time. And so, I have to also say, sorry to, if I interrupted you, um, I think that we were actually also very, we were stretched this year yes. in terms of our spiritual capacity. I remember, Where? you know, talking about Pastor Taiwo, how on a Sunday service, he will make you speak in tongues for at least 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. You know, yes. something that most of us haven't done before. He will make you, and it, it was a learning process, and then we grew in that process, and he will tell you the importance, you know, the, of, of speaking in tongues and praying in a dimension, you know, you have never prayed in. And then I think it was Pastor Jimmy who, when he was preaching, also tied, you know, into that when he talked about the groaning. I think it was the cut of the covenant when he was talking about, you know, um, that groaning and how, you know, even when you don't have any, anything to say, yes. you just keep groaning. Yes. Please, our online community, send in your comments. Remember, send in, um, you can always send in your testimonies to... Um, Fountain at tflc.org. Yes. And also, you can watch us live on Jimmy Odukoya official YouTube page. You can watch us live on the Fountain of Life Church, Fountain TV. You can watch us on Instagram. Yes, the Fountain of Life Church. Church. And also on Facebook. And you can also watch Jimmy Odukoya on Instagram. That is his handle is at I am that PJ. So you, are, you, you have every, all the platforms are available for you to stream live and join in. So share the link, please. If you have the link, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, invite friends to join. This is 31st night. You know, this is a unique day in the whole wide world. world yes. Everybody is preparing to cross into a new year. We are looking forward to making it to 2024. Some people have already started going, like Cordelia, who is in Japan. She's already in 2024. It's about past 3 a.m. now. So some of us are still waiting to join her in 2024. There are others that are already, they are still yesterday. <laughs> we are already <laughs> ahead of them. So please send in your comments, send in, share the link, and please, like I said, tell us what were those if you remember some of the months in the year of 2023 and the theme and what stood out for you for that particular month. 
share with us. We want to discuss the year 2023, how it has been for you, how it has been for your family, for your friends, for anybody, even as a church and an, as an online community. Let us know how this church has blessed you, even online as well. So if you know you don't have anywhere to go to for the crossover service, you can just walk into the Fountain of Life Church. We are at um, Ilukweju. You can join us. But then if you're in your house, you can join us anywhere across the world. You can just join us live. Just like Sister Ibarra said, share the link to your friends, your family members. I want to believe God has a word for you tonight and you don't want to miss it. So you make sure that you stay connected one way or the other. So if you can walk in live into the auditorium, it has been made possible for you to find your own self online, at least. A number of us are online. Yes. yes. So Absolutely. do yourself that favor. Gladness additional sends a comment. She says, yes, it was just like you were talking about the cut of the covenant. She affirms and confirms with you saying the cut of the covenant. She really enjoyed that topic. And in part three, Pastor Jimmy talked about the Holy Spirit being our comforter, intercessor, strengthener, our standby, our, all the things you could remember. You know, we can mention here, he was, he's our helper also. He's our mainstay. So that was, was that Agnes? No, this is gladness. Gladness. gladness I, I, I just addition. want to agree with her too that um, the court of the covenant, I really enjoyed. So we're together on that. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so do you have any comments? Um, no, but just have uh, people are joining. Um, I, I, I think that is just remarkable how um, with data, because you're using your data and people are willing you know, to join, especially online. Mm. And that's remarkable. We have to continue to commend our online community for yes. how dedicated yes. and committed they are. And they actually sent in, they actually sent in their emojis, applause emojis. Thank you so much. And I also applaud you as well. Thank you so much. God bless you. And you know one thing with our online community is they're not just there. They are not dormant. Very active. They are very, very active. active. Very, very you know, active. Pastor Tosi mentioned it earlier on, um, you know, uh, on Sunday service um, in the morning, talking about the fact that online community are really, really involved in everything that is going on. Even Thursday showers, mm -hmm. our online community join. And you know, when it has to do with um, sowing seeds into Absolutely. other people's lives, Absolutely. they are very, very ready to do that. So. There is no barrier for us to say we can't join a community of um, believers at this point. I want to believe this has created an avenue for us to, you know, be together, to worship God together, to worship God together as a family. Yes, and I know we've been on and on and on about you, online community, and we know your names. But do you know our names? I am Iboro Tonya Edet. Actually, I'm Bukola Balogun. We didn't mention our names earlier. <laughs> I am precious, am I? But I just want to take some comments from um, Pastor Jimmy's um, YouTube channel. People who, uh, there are people here, Eugenia is saying, oh Lord, thank you for linking me to Fountain of Life. Absolutely. Uh, God bless you, Pastor J and Pastor T. That's Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Tolu. Um, Eugenia also says, I'm watching live from Ghana. Mm. And, I'm you, and I am connected, uh, and I connect my life to the service of the Fountain of Life Church. Thank you so much. Thank Patience you. says, I'm watching for Minnesota, and I can't wait to hear the word of God from Pastor Jimmy and the worship songs by Pastor Tulu. Really, we all can wait. Yes, we all can wait. And then Marjorie says, watching from Trinidad. Oh, great. In the West Indies, thanking God for all he has done for my family in 2023 and what he's about to do in 2024. And then, uh, oh, I think it's Pastor Jimmy. Pastor Jimmy says, January to December 2023, God did it. May our sacrifice of praise this evening usher in blessings unaccountable for us. Amen. Uh, unaccountable, rather, for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, I have Tony L. Okorie. She says, August year, August year, or our month, actually. She, I'm sure she meant our month. August, our month of unusual turnaround. That was a... Very, that was a defining month for us as a church, church. as mm. well. August, our year of unusual turnaround. It was indeed an unusual turnaround for absolutely. us. Yes. Bumi Efe or Bumi Fa is also watching from Ghana. Efosa from Ghana. That's what she says. 
Then Michael Peters 2023 has been a wonderful year of the Holy Spirit and a transition into God's abundance or abundance of grace. Indeed, 2023 is a blessed year all around. Then we have Michael Peters says he's watching from Maryland, USA. Thank you for joining us, Michael. God bless you. Efezino Omorobe is watching from England. Thank you, Efe. Um, Ebi Abashi is watching from United Kingdom. Thank you guys for joining us. We really appreciate you. Absolutely. We have to say that over and over again because um, it's not that you're Nigerians who live in, a, in diaspora. It's that sometimes you're even um, citizens of these countries and there are churches in your country. And thank you for joining Fount. Thank you for choosing to be a fountain here. Even when, you know, um, it's data. It takes, I mean, you have to use your data. Thank you so much for joining every service. I think that's actually a sacrifice that it everyone is. is making. Yes, it it's is. a sacrifice that everyone is making. And even if you're in Nigeria, and just like I mentioned earlier, if you don't have a place to worship today, and you want a Bible-believing church, the Fountain of Life is one. It's a Bible-believing church. It's a family church. And um, you can join us live on Instagram um, at the Fountain of Life Church. You can also join us on YouTube, Fountain TV. You can... Um, Join us on Facebook as well, the Fountain of Life Church. You can join us there, share this link with other people, and we'll all enjoy ourselves in God's presence. I want to keep recognizing my online community, our online fountaineers. I have Olugumi Adu. He says, God really showed up for me this year, 2023. Beyond my expectation, God raised people for me. And throughout the year, despite the ups and downs, God took care of me and my family. Lord, I thank you. We thank God on your behalf as well. Jonathan Okeke is watching from Potakot. Thank you, Jonathan. How is the oil state doing? Tayo Dejimi says, time for 2024. So, yes, yeah, so um, I just want to take this from, again, Pastor Jimmy's um, YouTube channel. It's in Gozi Wosu. She says, uh, Wosa, rather, even though I am in the hospital with a broken arm, I'm happy my eyes and the rest of my body are okay to witness this. That's the spirit. That's um, the spirit. fact that you're alive. Thank you so much for joining, first of all. Keeping the spirit alive. Uh, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining. And then, you know, that's the positive spirit. And just in case you know someone who's having a tough time, who has tried, who's giving up, you know, just because they've had a tough year, please share the link with them. You know, it's going to be an amazing service. Share the link with them. Uh, this is going to help them. Perhaps they will receive their word and receive their instructions as well. And I think this is quite uplifting. And, um, you know, she says she's on the hospital yes. bed. She's in the hospital with a broken arm, but she's still grateful. Mm. And um, I think that is one thing that we also, as believers who are watching this or who has one of, if you have heard this, this is just to show you that no matter the challenge you're going through, Thanksgiving is another key for us to access whatever it is that we need, whatever it is that we want, being grateful to God. You know, it's like us fueling whatever it is God has done, and then we're expecting him to do more. So for us to be thankful, no matter the situation, is another theme that we have to cultivate as believers. So wherever it is that you are at the moment, I don't know whatever situation you might find yourself, just try, just try and be grateful and have a heart of gratitude today being the 31st of December 2023. You might be wondering why I've been grinning from ear to ear. You know, our online community, they can be very, very, they can be so hilarious. <laughs> they can be so hilarious here. Yeah? Gladness Adishino says, who, I don't know who she's referring this to, but she says, join them or they'll give you cookies and drink in a wonderful pack as a festival. <laughs> I said, first time, I don't see, I didn't tell you. <laughs> Thank you for the updates. So this is us giving your updates, or this is this person giving your updates. Oh, Lord. All right, so um, I think it's Shirley says, hello, church, happy New Year Eve. Um, bless everyone. God, I thank you from Alabama, that's U.S. And then um, Skepsi says, watching from Aqua Ibomuyu. Okay, Simisola Odofin says, thanking God for all he did for myself and my family for supernatural provision. 2023 was a beautiful year. I know 2024 would be an awesome year. Thank you, Fountain, for being a vital part of my 2023. Olayinka Maki says, watching from LA, 
enjoying every bit and blessed always to stay up and watch often. Thank you for sacrificing your sleep, Olayinka. Yes, thank, thank you so you, much. Thank you. Chinwe Kanu Uba says, watching from Abia State, I'm the one God has shown his mercy in 2023. Not only thank you, God. me too. God has shown me mercy yes. this year. Yes, yes, yes. I want I'm to talking be, about yeah. Thanksgiving, sorry. I'm talking about Thanksgiving. I just wanted to say, please prepare to dance. Right. Because I, I just have, I have that feeling that we are going to dance. We have senior pastors who love to dance. Pastor Jimmy mentioned it earlier. You know, when, when, the, um, when the band was really into whatever oh, it is yes, that we were playing, yes. and it was like, leave it for later. Leave it yes. for later. <laughs> Enough so plan to dance. dance. <laughs> so plan to dance. Plan to dance. So wherever you are watching from, oh, well, except you're at work, you just Even dance. If you're at work, you can. You know, you know some people, some, some of their jobs. It depends jobs on the job, yes. yes. It depends on the job. You may be in the hospital taking care well, of people. I think people. it's one day that you're allowed to. To be no, grateful, even, so you can, even if you're at work, you can dance. Mm. It's one day, I mean, yeah, where you I are allowed to be that anywhere. grateful. Anywhere, once it clocks 12 midnight, 1st of January 2024, everyone, no matter what you're doing, you're allowed to throw your hands in the air and shout and Happy New Year, Year and scream for joy. So please, just give yourself those two minutes time to, you know, shake your body and dance. Then when you get home, play back this video, play back the service and dance to your fullest. I think that's another thing, you know, the fact that we have service here and then we get to stream and then we go to our different mm -hmm. homes. Thank God for the internet that has made it possible for us to say, have access to these messages. It's not like you have to pay for anything for you to be able to have access to these messages. You can go back. Now, Absolutely. we've had messages from January to December, mm -hmm. some of them that you can resonate with, some of them that actually minister to you, you can go back, you know, to listen to those messages and then um, you definitely are going to be blessed. And December being a month of um, abundant, gifts. abundant yes. gifts, 2023 is not yet over. Absolutely. Mm -mm. Pastor Jimmy it will is say, not yet you over. Know, you, you prepare for anything. You can still receive your anything gifts. Anything can happen. Yes. The God of the eleventh hour is definitely Absolutely. still there. Still on the throne. Yes, he's still on the throne. You might just receive a call while you are seated, wherever it is that you are. You might just be receiving a call of something you've been believing God for. Whatever it is, God can be ministering to you at this point, and that might be your own gift for the year 2023 or for the month of December 2023. It could be an idea. Yes, it, it could, could be an idea. An instruction. It could be anything yes. that will change your life in 2023. So stay expectant. You Don't know, give up. I I always say something that um, God is not confined to our timing. So don't limit yourself thinking that, oh, it clocked 12 midnight and I didn't see that thing or it has clocked. No, God can do it at his, he makes all things beautiful in his time. time so don't yes. give up, don't throw your hands out, you know, up in despair. It didn't happen. Mm. I haven't seen it. Mm. I have not seen it. No, 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 no. Don't. Keep trusting God. 1201, God will still show up for you. Absolutely. 1 a.m. 1159. 11. Look, Anything can don't happen. Limit God. Don't cage God in a box. Don't put him in a box. Leave God to do what he will do. He could come through for you right now as we are speaking. Yes. He could come through for you anytime, any day. But all you need to do, our encouragement is trust in God that he will do it. And you know, another thing is we always have goals that we have set for the year and then when we don't get to achieve some of these things, we begin to feel like, oh, um, I didn't do well, I failed in these aspects and all of all that. It's just a new year we're getting into. It doesn't mean the world has stopped in 2023. No, it doesn't mean. If you have goals, if you had plans that you had put in place, and it feels like these things, you couldn't accomplish them, 2024 is another opportunity for you to do whatever yes, it is. Go back to those plants, you know, yes. re-strategize, try to go through whatever it is I have written down and then look for ways, you know, to begin to try to implement them. Mm -hmm. While you're seated, just like Sister Iboro said, 1201, God can visit you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Still about a thing that you had started in 2023 or for the year 2024. So don't just give up. Keep your mind open. Let your mind be open. Pastor will tell us we shouldn't create monuments. And then patterns to which probably we have, we, we believe we've been hearing God. And then it's only that way God has been talking to us and it's only that way God will talk to us. And, no. And 
that was um, the arc of his presence. And yes. I just wanted to say that as well, that, you know, one of the, one of the messages in that series that resonated with me is um, setting the Lord before you. So while making plans, you know, for the year 2024, in all of it, don't forget that message, set mm. the Lord before you. So with that, we are beginning to get set to prepare to get into service. So wherever you are, get your dancing shoes one side, Ready. or if you're in a Absolutely. comfortable spot like me, I'm going to, when I leave this place, I'm going to throw off my shoes. So that I'll be very, <laughs> yes. I have you did to, that earlier, it's okay. Dance. <laughs> I have to dance. Nothing is going to hinder me from dancing, dancing. away whatever worries I may have, that mm -hmm. may have followed mm -hmm. me here, that may have lingered, or any residue of 2023, they are all ending this year. Mm. And I'm starting 2024 on a fresh, brand new slate, and I expect you to do same as well absolutely and finally just to say thank you Marie for joining us from Uganda let's lead you um, into the service now let's join the service for the pre-service prayers so just before um, the service opens at 8 p.m. all right thank you so much for joining us thank you for joining us Amibora we'll be Tony back Edith. again yes we're going to be yes. back again just to get to hear from you whatever it is you have picked from the message for this evening into tomorrow morning so make sure you don't go anywhere just stay tight we're going to be here bombados later on that's if right. we will even have the time because the excitement will be too much we may not <laughs> we right, may we not be able to. to come back but we hope to see you in Absolutely. 2024 all right let's by the join grace service of God. um thank you so much for watching i am precious thank you. Um, I'm I'm thank you so much Hallelujah, 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 shall we rise up, can you kindly walk around, welcome your neighbor, welcome somebody to this service, deliberately welcome somebody to this service. Deliberately welcome somebody to this service. Father, we thank you. Jehovah, we worship you. 
eternal rock of ages will magnify your name for who can be compared unto you who can be likened unto you you open and no man can shut you preserve and no man can contaminate you are God eternal the rose of Sharon the balm of Gilead the giver of life the way maker the one that opens and no man can shut father we want to say thank you for today above every other thing we want to say thank you for today this is the last day of the year 2023 we survived from january we went through february we walked through the month of march we saw april we moved on to may we crossed over onto june july he saved us in august he sustained us in september he lifted our head in october he glorified his name in november and here we are today more than my mouth can testify more than my heart can comprehend oh i see the wonders of your us in spite of the harsh economy we are standing i want us to begin to thank god father will bless you father we thank you father we worship you we have come to say thank you. We have come to say thank you. We have eyes we can see. We have our feet we can walk. We have our hands we can use them. Father, we do not take it as a right, but we are here to say thank you. That all through this year, 2023, you have been our shield. You have been our rock. You have been our God. You have been our comforter. You have been everything to us as we have desired. We give you all the praise. Father, we give you all the praise. We declare that who is like unto thee, O Lord, amongst the gods who is like unto thee. Father, we are not here to complain. We are just here to say thank you. Who is like all to thee oh, oh Lord who is like unto thee oh Lord among the God who is like
I want us to stand on Psalm 32 verse 8 it says I will instruct and direct you in the way you would go it says and I will counsel and guide you with my eyes as we move into the new year I want us to stand on that promise asking God for his instructions and directions and his counsel and guidance as we move into this new terrain that the Lord will perfect all that concerns us that the Lord will teach us he will lead us and we will hear and we will follow I want us to begin to pray Psalm 32 verse 8 God lead me as we move into this new terrain God help me God teach me God guide me God direct my steps Oh, my career, Lima, Oh, as we move into 2024, I want us to ask that grace and mercy will proceed before us. Meko seria li ma ko sonto do lobo ko sikte ma ko shkabora li ba 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 da wisdom will be added concerning our decisions in 2024. Meko shkabora li ba 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 ba. Meko seria li bo ko sento do lobo ko sinte. Ora li ma ko se ke 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 that we will not go to where he doesn't want us to go and we will not miss where he wants us to be. Me suria ma ko suria ba 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 O be ke siri ba ka sete O ra li ma ko suria ma 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 O me ko se ke 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 Father we thank you for 2023 It is done and accomplished We look forward to 2024 Father we ask for grace Father we ask for grace we cover 2024 with the blood of Jesus. We ask that mercy and grace precedes us in the name of Jesus. We ask for divine wisdom concerning 2024, concerning our church, concerning the body of Christ, concerning our nation. We ask for mercy. We ask for grace. We ask for wisdom. We ask for proper direction in the name of Jesus. Masera boko se ke 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 Marco shaka ba 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 In Jesus name How can I say thanks For the things that you have done Things I don't deserve Back up, help me How can I say thanks all the things that you have done Things I don't deserve But you proved your love to me The voices of a million angels Can back up, help me Cannot express my gratitude All I am, I never hope to be I give it all You have 
your whisper for someone that God has kept alive oh is there somebody who can help help me out this evening oh give God some crazy world prize yeah yeah holy ghost we are still here having done all the Bible says we should stand 
let me remind you why you need to praise the Lord. Most of us are forgetting how this year started. Hey. It started with cash crunch. Hey. I mean, cash crunch. But you were not crunched. Hey. Hey. Then elections came on top. They thought we were going to be scattered. They thought Nigeria was going to go under. But guess what? We are still here. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Then, subsidy. Kayabakatala. But Holy Ghost is our subsidy. Hallelujah. Then, devaluation. But you are not devalued. Oh, let God, let God, somebody give God some praise. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Oh, our cup has run over. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Lord, we worship you. Tonight, I want you to tell your neighbor, congratulations. And I'm telling you why. If you were in the service in the morning, Pastor Jay said something. <laughs> I don't know if you missed it. I will repeat it. He said 2024 was great. Oh, you didn't get it. It's not 2023, oh. 2024 was great. That should be your theme song. Choir compose a song for that. Hallelujah. Because we have already lived in it. God has gone before us. Make the crooked road straight. Make the rough road smooth. Bring down every mountain. Bring down, bring up every valley. So as you go into 2024, be assured of what God has done. He's done great and marvelous things. I hear it in my spirit. Mafoya. Ask your neighbor, what was that Greek? Mafoya. Hallelujah. Don't jump heart. Don't let your heart jump. Hallelujah. There are many things that want to make your heart jump in 2024. But anytime it comes your way, you will say 2024 was great. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. This evening, I welcome you to this. You may be, please be seated. I welcome you to this watch night service. Those here and those online. Let's appreciate our online, online people. Let's, let's, is that how we appreciate them? Online people, we love you. And I'm sure, I am so confident that this is going to happen that miracles going to happen in this service in the name of Jesus God is going to do awesome things here in the name of Jesus I want you to fasten your seat belt I want you to walk in faith the Bible says looking unto Jesus somebody say Jesus oh say him say it like you believe him say Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith don't let your neighbor disturb you today. Just focus on Jesus because he's going to do marvelous things. Hallelujah. Put your hands together one more time. We give God the praise. We have a number of testimonies this evening. And I want you to key into this testimony. The Bible says we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the power of our testimonies. Hallelujah. Let's key into them. And I know you will be next in the name of Jesus. I'd like to call Jimmy Ahisu Oluwabomi. 
Please come straight. Quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly. We have very short time to take all this. Good evening, church. Good evening, Pastor Jay. Good evening, Pastor Tolu. All pastors present and online and my honorable fountainers. I am most grateful to God for the year 2023. It was indeed a year. My promise for the year is taken from 1 Thessalonians 5.24. And it says, Faithful is he who has called you, for he will surely do it. Indeed, he did it. January this year, I wrote down things I needed to achieve, and I told God I did not know how he was going to do it, but I needed to finish the year on a high. I never knew he would start in January. I remember the words of Pastor Jay a few years back when he said, like David, I will stand out. I resumed where I work now on the 4th of January, 2021, and as is customary, I was to be confirmed two years later. To God be the glory, I stand before you a confirmed and pensionable staff at my place of work. Secondly, I told God that this year, I wanted to finish everything concerning my master's program before September. By the way, I had graduated since 2021. But work hadn't allowed me to go collect my certificate. On the day I went to collect the certificate, I spent roughly three days before it could be collected. In the midst of it all, we lost our beloved Pastor Taiwo Odukoya. In fact, I was on bike when I got the call. But I give God all the glory. The certificate collection on the third day was on divine intervention, as nobody was available to give the certificate. But the head of archives was available and she said, even though everybody has gone home, I would go into the archives and look for your certificate for you. So she went in and said, what's your name again? I gave her my name and she brought her my certificate. I stand before you today, a master's degree holder in peace and conflict studies with a published article online. Finally, I started a marketing program in June but because I wasn't grounded in marketing, I didn't meet up with expectations and I was asked to represent. I had to wait another three months, which is the standard. After the additional three months, I had my presentation and was told to brush up my slides and present in three days. To God alone be the glory. I stand before you, a certified brand manager with certification from the Brand Management Academy. I am grateful to God for the wonderful support system to I am grateful to God for the wonderful support system he gave to me in our late beloved Pastor Taiwo, my parents, my siblings, and my girlfriend. Their words of encouragement drove me each day. In fact, my dad told me that this brand management is an investment in you. And when I gave him the certificate, he, present, he said to me, he said, this will be the least you would ever collect. Truly, God's word does not go back to him void. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. The only thing I heard in that testimony is that his dad said <laughs> you people a hey, one thing on the heels of another you know testimony mama shubulu testimony testimony will be falling upon testimonies in your life is are you remo here Okay, I'll read this testimony. I want to thank God for answering my prayers. I'm a medical student, and during one of the Sunday service, I prayed that in my coming exam, I will get a distinction in some subjects. 
to glory to God be the glory the results have started coming in and I got a distinction in a subject I really wanted one in I pray God perfects the remaining to the glory of his name amen in Jesus name many more distinctions and we use you as a point of contact to everybody writing exams distinctions in Jesus name all right I'll read this testimony uh, while I'm reading the testimony, Victor and Nosike, please come here. Hallelujah. I write this testimony to the glory of God. This is from Adeni Ketaiwo. I write this testimony to the glory of God, who is good, faithful, merciful, and indeed gracious. I thank God for how he saw my family through the various challenges that raised their heads. It was indeed our year of the Holy Spirit. I thank God that my two children, who were to have graduated in 2022, finally graduated this year, in spite of all the gimmicks of the enemy. God showed up for us with his favor and mercy. There was a major challenge with one of my children earlier in the year that caused the school to ask for our withdrawal from the school. We were perplexed and really confused, but to God be the glory, within two weeks, by the Spirit of God, we were able to get another school. This was early second term. The journey was very turbulent, but we kept crying to God as our child was visibly anxious whenever going to school. It was really bad as parents and we're quite concerned. Today, by the message of God, he has put an end to the trouble that looked like it would never end. As our child is now fully settled and enjoying the new school. Hallelujah. I'm a showerian, so I'm in Thursday showers as often as possible except when work doesn't permit. I have received and enjoyed gifts from God this month as Pastor Jimmy Proclaim that God was giving gifts in our month of abundant gifts. Indeed, my Christmas was very merry as God granted most of my heart desires and requests. So I have come to say a big thank you to my father and to testify of his loving kindness. God is real. God is true. God can be trusted. God is dependable. He never fails. I believe the remaining gifts that I'm looking for to him will be delivered before the 31st of December 2023 when this testimony will be read. Thank you Pastor Jimmy, thank you the Fountain of Life Church, indeed the Holy Spirit is the pastor of the house and he will continue to lead and guide us. Hallelujah. Let's praise God for that testimony. Amen. Victor, two minutes. Good evening church. Good evening church. Ah, yes, so this is my very very first testimony here. Okay. Um, testimony starts in 2016. Um, I was on my way for an ushering job that time, um, trying to save up money to get into um, for school and everything. And then my mom calls me on the phone and she's like, If I, wherever you are, start to come. I'm like, ah, What's the problem? She said, Pastor Taiwo is calling for scholarships. He's trying to give um, scholarships to um, ch um, students. I'm like, okay, but I'm on the island. There's no way. It's an altar call. It's going to take five, ten minutes. It's not possible. She said, no, just come, just come. I, I'm a chemical engineering student. I'm fresh undergraduate. Mommy, the momentum is not momenting. The velocity will not work. Even if I use a Ferrari, she cried, cried, and ended the call. Pastor G says we should obey our parents. Okay. With anger, I came. And then I got to church, and then, like I predicted, pastor was done with the altar call. But then Pastor Jay says something, that God already knows what we need before we even ask. And I said, okay, I've missed it, no problem. I was directed to one of the, the HOD ushering. I wrote down my name with somebody else. I didn't even think I was going to be called. Okay. Weeks went by. I wasn't even expecting anything. There was no faith. It was just me writing my name, and I left. And then I got uh, reached out to Pastor um, Pastor Paul Briggs reached out to me and I came and everything and then long story cut short a lot of things happened in my family that I did not even expect was going to happen so it meant that the scholarship opportunity I got by God's grace there was a, a family who said they wanted to sponsor somebody I don't even know them up to now but thank God, God for Pastor Taiwo thank God for Fountain of Life Church it happened and then all three has been grace grace because chemical engineering is hard i was humbled then one thing that happened before i round off 
my final year paper, a lot of things happened in my family, emotional, financial, and a lot of things was happening. And then I was writing my last paper, and then usually I would do my best and leave the rest to God. But then my best was just one question. I answered one question out of five, three hours, I was shaking, final paper, Jesus. And then, because I did not know what to write again, I had time to even see that, ah, my neighbor in front, full page, Jesus. Ah. I looked at the back, equation, drawings. Ah, who, who taught us this one? Ah, why was I in class? I don't understand. And when the result came out, I didn't even want to check because I already knew that ah, it is finished, like Jesus said. And my friend now came, and then he, apparently, the people, the person who sat in front of me and at the back, they saw their result, and it was a D. What is my? But I had to check. So eventually, I went and I saw a C. How? One question out of five. So I just want to thank God because that just showed me something. That we all run individual races. And the grace God has given us is sufficient. So I just thank God that he has seen me through. I came out with a 2-1. Chemical engineering photo. After the ASU strike. Corona, everything. I just want to say thank you very much. And I also want to thank the church because my mom was in and out of the hospital and the church was very close, closer than a family. And my fam her family members did a lot, but I thank God for the church and God and every person here. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Our, fre our freshest, chem freshest chemical engineer you know there are some C's that look like A you know many years ago I wrote an exam and in the middle of the exam people say graph paper I said there's graph in this exam there's graph so me too I say graph paper I say at least on graph they will put X axis and Y axis so I put X axis Y axis I just drew something <laughs> Wisdom is profitable to direct. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am Ola Yinka Bosede. I reside in Ijebu Ode Ogun State. I joined the church online community a few months back. And ever since I've been following the church, the ride has been smooth. I've been experiencing unspeakable and unexplainable joy and peace from joining the church's life's programs. I also downloaded Pastor Jimmy's messages. I have been enjoying the Holy Spirit like never before. And God has been coming through for me. I am sincerely glad to be part of the online community church. Praise the Lord. God bless Pastor Jimmy. God bless Pastor Tulu. I also downloaded her song ministrations. I have been tremendously blessed. God bless the Fountain of Life Church. Praise the Lord. I think that deserves a big round of applause. There is no barrier in the spirit. It means her relationship with God is growing. If you find yourself in Lagos, we welcome you on site. Hallelujah. This is from Babel uh, Tebai Nawihe. I hope I pronounced that properly. My name is Babel, and I was in, it is, was indeed a month of abundant gifts. I moved to Canada with my family as permanent residents in September 2023, and God has been merciful to us, help, helping us settle down. The month of December was really a month of abundant gifts. I got a job as I'm still trusting and believing that he who gave me the job will give my husband and I our desired jobs very soon. It will happen in Jesus' name. I also, I also have made some payment, got some payments from the government. I was pleasantly surprised because... I was not expecting it. And lastly, we got the latest iPhone 15 for free through the company my husband works for. Hallelujah. Amen. There are some free things coming your way in 2024 that you are not expecting. You know, nothing is small to God. Hallelujah. Uh, this testimony is from Adura. It says, God has been pleasantly faithful to me ever since I joined Fountain in 2021 November. I'd yearned for a fresh perspective for my Christian life and decided to visit a few churches I had penned down, starting with Fountain. 
However, since the day I stepped into Fountain, I just can't see myself in any other place. When I joined Fountain, God answered my prayers and gave me a job that met my professional demands at that time. Whilst on the job, I experienced a few challenges and I heard God clearly telling me to calm down at the beginning of this year. I held on to the promise of God while also upgrading myself via trainings to fit into the next role I wanted. And God did it for me. Sometimes in November, through the prophecy of Pastor Jimmy that he gave at the November edition of the monthly prayer and fasting service. I got an outstanding offer from a globally reputable firm that continues to amaze me till this day. To add to this, I have experienced spiritual emancipation, garnished with a sound understanding of my life in Christ while also finding the purpose of my existence. Let's, put, let's give God the praise for that testimony. This is a testimony from Elizabeth from the United Kingdom. My name is Elizabeth. I'm an online community member. Last year, October, November, I started premenopause that brought with it a lot of negative symptoms, including mental health issues. Started having serious and paralyzing negative thoughts. I went to the doctors and I was told the feeling I'm having is called doom syndrome. Doom. There's no doom here in Jesus' name. We counsel it in Jesus' name. Which is rare because most common symptoms of menopause are hot flushes, night sweat, anxiety, and so on. I was given a medication, and I was told the medication will make it worse before it gets better. Truly, the first three days of taking the medication, it was excruciatingly unpleasant, and I had to stop it immediately. A scripture came to mind. My people perish for lack of knowledge. So I went to study more on menopause and I learned more about hormone replacement therapy. I placed myself on a medication that I have researched, why really helped, uh, which really helped. But one of the main observations from the reviews is that one must continue taking the medication for a long period. I told God I didn't want to rely on medication and didn't want to use it too long because I believe him for my healing. So I decided to use it for a short period. And in April, I tried to stop, but after three weeks, I went back to it. So I prayed to God that when it's time to stop, he will let me know. So I continued taking the medication at a specific time of the day consistently. Come December fasting and prayer session, I took the medicine on Monday and Tuesday, 30 minutes later than, unusual, than usual. When I realized that I missed the usual time slot for two days, I decided to take a step of faith not to take it for the rest of the fasting period. On Friday, anointing service, Pastor Jimmy said, God is doing an exchange. And I quickly claimed it and started praying for exchange regarding my mental health. He asked us to place our hands on our head for the anointing and began to decree and declare that God's purpose concerning me will stand and the light of God should shine. I asked God for abundant gift mentally and to the glory of God from that day till eternity. I have not taken the medication. I'm free from the mental torture. Truly, I am the woman that God has helped. Praise the Lord. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Everyone who requires healing, today you will receive the healing in Jesus' name. This is from Bisola. I want to thank God for 2023 in its totality. Specifically, I want to thank God for my son who got admitted to one of the top five universities in Canada. He started on a relatively difficult note as he was ill, he ill at the beginning. Though we had family relatives close to his school there, there was, however, no one available at the time of his resumption to settle him into school. We thank God that he was, however, able to recover quickly and settle into school. We were weary at the time of his admission as my husband had just started an entrepreneurial journey after almost a year of leaving his previous employer who had owed him several months' salaries. So the idea of funding school abroad while our finances were challenged is humanly unattainable. The period was very challenging for us as is also manifested in my husband's physical appearance. He, was, he lost so much weight. But we, however, held on to God's word that he will provide for our needs according to his riches and glory. 
The Lord, however, came through for us as my son was offered a scholarship and at, the, at about the same time, the Lord provided a job for my husband through a recommendation from an ex-colleague. He went through several interviews and it took a while before this process was concluded, almost six months, that we even thought the potential employer had concluded the process without nominating my husband. It was successful at the very end. Just about the same time we were dealing with our financial issues, the doctors advised that I remove a lump that I had been in my rice best for investigation. Because of our financial challenges at the time, we had to use our public health facility where we were confronted with usual bureaucracy and relatively different type of health services compared to what I was accustomed to. To the glory of God, the surgery was successful and I returned home the same day. One more thing was that we had to wait for the outcome of the investigation for almost two weeks to know whether the tissue removed from my body was cancerous. The two weeks of waiting looked like years, but we received the good news that the tissue was non-cancerous. I also want to bless God for <clears throat> who blessed my sister with a baby girl after 13 years of marriage at the age of 50 years. One of the promises that the Lord blessed us with this year is the one that resonates with me in Psalm 33. The Lord indeed has been a shield for our family, is the glory and the lifter of our heads. Hallelujah. That deserves a praise offering. Hallelujah. God is good. The last testimony I would read here this evening is from Cornelius. Good evening, church. I want to start by saying thank you to the Lord Almighty for his continual love, mercy, and kindness to my family. And I, because he has been truly been merciful to my mother this year, showing that he is in control of everything and anything that concerns us. A warm thank you to the church, pastors, and loved ones. My testimony started mid-year 2022 when the devil tried to test my mom by giving her a bleeding nose, which led to her losing a lot of weight, marking the beginning of the devil's downfall. All these was as a result of an increase in our blood pressure. A couple of months back this year, while my mom was receiving medications at home for typhoid and malaria, at home, my mom experienced a cardiac shock. She was then rushed to the hospital. After a series of tests, she was diagnosed with spatial stroke, a temporary paralysis on the right side of her body, and a blood disease. My family and I struggled a lot to keep up with the medical bills and the everyday challenges uh, we had to pull through as we weren't financially fit enough to hire professional help. And so we shared the responsibility within ourselves, making us cancel a lot of plans we had for that year. I would say the Lord tested, I would say our faith was tested, but we strive and didn't give in to the devil's work. Here we are today, although my mom is gradually recovering, I have my testimony because she's alive. No form of paralysis in her body. None of my family members are hurt but in good health. There is, there is reason that the Lord has kept my mom, which I believe is to fulfill his promises as always. Join me to thank God, for he never forsakes his children. I will continue to stick with the melody of Pastor Tolu that has been my guide through all which says that if you give me a reason, I will praise you. And even without a reason, I will praise you. Hallelujah. You are next in line in the name of Jesus. I want you to key into this service because there are testimonies coming in this service. God will do awesome and marvelous things in the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome RGK.
cross over. We about to cross over. We about to cross over. Forward, march. We about to cross over. We about to cross over. We about to cross over. Forward, march. Say. We about to cross over. We about to cross over. Sing for march. We about to cross over. We about to cross over. We about to cross over. Sing for march. Say. We about to cross over. We about to cross over. Sing for what? March. We about to cross over. We about to cross over. We about to cross over. Sing for what? March. We about to cross over. We about to cross over. We about to cross over. Forward. March. We about to cross over. We about to cross over. We about to cross over. Sing for what? March. Possess the land, possess the land, possess the land. Possess the land, possess the land, possess the land. Possess the land, possess the land, possess the land. Possess the land, possess the land, possess the land. Possess the land, possess the land, possess the land. Possess the land, possess the land, possess the land. Possess the land, possess the land, possess the land. Possess the land, possess the land, possess the land. Possess the land, possess the land, possess the land. Possess the land, 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 possess the land,
of Jacob, great I am, King of angels, Son of man, voice of many waters, song of heaven's soul, louder than a thunder, make your glory know. Let the lion roar. Hear, hear, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. Hear, hear, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. Hear, hear, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar.
Let the lion roar. Let it roar, let it roar. Let it roar, let it roar. Let it roar. Yeah. Let it roar, let it roar, let it roar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be raised up on mountains, be me low. All mountains, be me low. God is a good God. Under how many minutes was that painting done? Please let's give God a round of applause. This is wonderful. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. I have some testimonies here that I'm going to read. I'd like to call Mr. and Mrs. Bayo Bankole to please come forward while I take this first testimony. Please come forward. And this testimony is from Sister UAN. And she says, Everything was going well when all of a sudden in the middle of the night in April, my vision was distorted. And I lost control of my right arm and my right leg. I wasn't sure what was happening, so I thought I was just very tired. I felt myself drawn to bed and slept thinking I will be better in the morning. I wasn't any better and realized at that moment I could have been having a stroke. So I struggled to get dressed and crawled out of my apartment to get help. Thankfully, I, call, I put a call through a colleague and resulted in emergency services getting to my apartment. Recovery at the neurological unit of the hospital was slow, but I thank God the late Pastor Taiwo learned about it and went through it with me, and he kept praying with me, assuring me that I would come out healed. After two weeks in hospital, I was discharged and allowed to complete my recovery back home. When I got back to Nigeria, the doctors informed me that I have suffered two strokes Apparently, I had had one even before the one that happened this year, and I did not know. I want to thank God because had I had the stroke here in Nigeria, there probably would have been much damage, and I may not have survived it. Not because of the medical services here, but because I stay alone at home. No one would have found me, nor had access to my apartment, which would have been worse. I remembered my elder brother who died in almost similar circumstances and was found too late. I am giving glory to God for saving me and for perfecting my healing. Praise the Lord. Mr. and Mrs. Bayo Bankole. Encourage them, please encourage them. Our testimony is to the glory of God to show that God is indeed still in the business of doing miracles. Uh, we have two views to this testimony and I'll try to make it as brief as possible within the time frame given. Uh, we got married in 2007 and like every couple, we we're expecting that uh, within one year we should be carrying at least our baby. Fast forward to 2009, my wife got pregnant a um, few weeks later, she started sporting, and uh, we went to the hospital. Doctor placed her on bed rest, and everything was fine. December 31st, 2009, I was in church here preparing for streaming, and she called. I quickly rushed home, took her to the hospital, and before you know it, the doctor callously said, there's nothing there. My wife was devastated. 
She didn't want to come for the crossover service. We had a friend that came in from US. She just told her that, you know what, just drop everything and go to church and just worship God. At least you are alive. We came over to church and um, after then we waited and waited and waited. Nothing happened. People came around, gave all sort of excuse, um, all sort of advice. Everybody became uh, a, a, a professional in the field. And we just had to like, you know what, let's just leave it. God will do it. God has promised and he will do it. Pastor Taiwo calls, he admonishes us with the word of God. He encourages us and we're just there. Fast forward to 2015. Then our marriage nearly hit the rock. We got separated for three years. That's another testimony. After three years, we got back together and we decided that, you know what? Okay, a colleague of ours in the office said, um, somebody gave birth at a major 57, and she was like, took her to see the, the friend and everything. She said, you know what? Why don't we try IVF? And um, for a lot of people, we don't know how IVF works. You just think you go in for IVF and that's the ultimate and that's it, you're out. And we went in for IVF, the first one, and the time to get the news came and all we got was, sorry, it's negative. And uh, we went in for the second IVF, the same thing. The third IVF, the same thing. At the third IVF, the doctor was very concerned and he had to take the case file to US when they had um, their, um, their annual conference because he just didn't understand what was happening. He said everything was fine with you. But before then, something happened. We went to another hospital for IVF and um, the doctor said, oh, you're gonna, you have fibroid, you're going to do a fibroid surgery. Then we decided, okay, you know what, let's just have it. Then we were deliberating, should we, should we not? She was just, she didn't have the release. So she was like, let's pray about it, we pray about it. Then I got a call for a meeting and I was about leaving the house for the meeting and she just said, you know what, come, let's pray. And she said, I could remember the prayer very well. I said, the reason for this meeting, God would open your eyes to see it. The meeting was being held in on the island. And um, well, one, the, the hospital is owned by one of our, the fountaineer, Dr. Alabi to be precise. I got in, I didn't even know anything about him. I didn't know what he does. I got in while I was waiting to have the meeting with him. I saw a pamphlet that said something about fibroid. I took it. Discussed with him, got home, discussed with my wife, and we went to meet him. And there's a testimony in that. The doctor that was supposed to do the fibroid checked my wife and said, oh, you had the surgery while we were young. What we we'll just do is we we'll just open up from the same surgery point and that's it. By the time we got to Dr. Alabi, all he said was, you know what, before I can even say anything, go for an MRI scan. And uh, from the MRI scan, it was discovered that if that surgery had been done the way the doctor wanted to do it, my wife probably wouldn't be standing here today. We thank God for that. So now, back to, after the third IVF and everything, we went in for the fourth IVF, and the same thing happened again. And the doctor was like, you know what? I don't understand what is happening anymore. I would advise that, let's go in for the fifth one immediately. And my wife was like, I'm not gonna do this. The doctor said, you know what? Don't think about the money. In fact, don't pay. Let's just look, I want a result, because I don't understand what is happening. When we got home, she was devastated. She actually was eating depression, and she didn't know it. And I called, I called her brother, and I said, see, this is what's happened to your sister. And we told her, have you tried everything? Have God, did God tell you that he's not going to do it? Why are you devastated? Wait for his time. You don't have control of time. God is the one that created time. So when is his appointed time, he's going to do it. Thank you. So we waited, and then one of our friends came in <laughs> and said, why don't you go in again? And she gave us a million naira. Now you know what, take, just go in and try again. Then our friend, the one that encouraged her in 2009, came to Nigeria, called her and said, um, I received the word and said, the doctor said, God said, whatever the doctor says, do it. Then she told me about it and we prayed and we went in the fifth time. And this time around, when we went in to get the results, the matron did not call us, said the doctor would like to see you, and we got there, and the doctor said, congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Bankale. Praise the Lord. You're pregnant. And um, exactly 28 days after our 15 year marriage, God gave us these two Twins. beautiful Praise girls. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. And um, we just want to encourage everyone waiting on the Lord that God indeed has promised. He said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the world. And he definitely does not lie. Amen. He will do it. Just believe and wait. Thank he you never much. fails. Congratulations. God never fails. His words are true. Just hold on and have faith and it will come to pass. If Sarah at 75 can be pregnant, how much more? Please just appreciate the Almighty Father. Our God is a good God. This is another testimony from our brother Wale. And he says, praise the Lord. Good evening, church. My name is Wale Ajayi Ade Dolapo. And I'm here to thank God for my life and the life of my family. On the 22nd of December, 2023, we were robbed in our house in Ijebode. And I just wanted to thank God. Because it could have been different. It could have been a different story. The robbers came to the house around 3 a.m. They went to the tenants at the back immediately and they robbed them. They tried to break in, but immediately they hit, they hit our door. I woke up in my room. My mom also came to my room because she saw them from her window immediately. And she picked up her phone and we called my dad. He started calling onto the security over the phone and they said they were coming. But 30 minutes went and no security. After robbing the tenants, they came to our door. But before that, my mom told me she was scared and that her body was already shaking. I, I told her to calm down because she's hypertensive. And I told her that nothing is going to happen. I don't know what confidence I had, but I just trusted God. Immediately they hit our door. My mom opened it for them. They came in, took our phones, work laptop, my mom's wedding ring. After that, one of them just asked for my mom's car keys and said she should come to open the car and tell them the security, um, the security on the car. <laughs> then, and they told her that if not, they will take one of her daughters with the car in case the car stops. My mother begged them and just asked them to, and then asked them for the, for the gate key. They opened the gates themselves and they left. I just want to thank God for my family because it could have been a whole different story then because God kept us. We went to church on Sunday to return all the glory. Our 11th hour miracle happened on the 24th of December 2023. They called us that my mom's car had already been found in Ibadan. The police officer told us to keep holding on to whatever we believe in because he is, he, that guy is a wanted criminal. Whenever he goes to rob houses, he will always leave a mark to know that he was there. But nothing happened in our house. I just want to thank God for my life and my family and my mom's life. And we thank God for restoring peace in our family. Praise the Lord. We will never see such an attack again in Jesus' name. Another testimony from Sister Monehi. And she says, I just want to thank God for his protection and deliverance over my life and my family's life. I invited my niece and nephew to last year carol service. And we all enjoyed the service. During the service, the choir sang a song which I did not know but keyed into it. And the song was, My Deliverer is Coming. My Deliverer is Standing By. After the carol service, on our way home, we were almost getting home just to cross the road and, and then and board a bus. From nowhere, a speeding vehicle ran past us and before I could blink my eyelid, the vehicle hit my nephew and threw him up, almost throwing him to the other side of the road. The vehicle almost crushed him, but the strength of the Lord came upon him and he immediately stood up and no internal injuries nor broken bones. With this miracle... With this miracle that happened in my life, I want to thank God for being my deliverer and for saving me for, from the love of the devil. It is well, oh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
Let's give God a round of applause. God is good. Oh my God. All right. I want to call Sister Onome to please come forward to read this testimony. Sister Onome, where are you? Encourage her, please, while she's coming forward. Sister Onome. Onome, Onome. Praise the Lord. Our God is good. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Pastor Jimmy. Good evening, Pastor Tolu. Um, I am the lady. I am the lady God has helped. I am sorry, Holy Spirit, for saying I am shy. Like you said to me, not shy to ask. There is a particular paper in my professional level that I have been writing, and at a point I almost gave up. Pastor Taiwo of Blessed Memory encouraged me and said I can do it. In the month of May, one of the pastors asked us to dare God for anything. She asked people believing God for a miracle to come outside and lay it at his feet. I took a step of faith and came out. She told us to pray and asked us to sing a song, a Yoruba hymn, a Queen. The following week was the exam. I told Holy Spirit that he's the one that is writing the exam, why I will be there for physical attendance, since he told me to go ahead and pay for the paper. After writing the paper, I got home and prayed and thanked God for making it a success. When the result came out in July, I checked and behold, I passed. I was so happy that finally Holy Spirit helped me to conquer the paper. I started the induction process and it was successful. I was inducted on the 5th of December 2023 as a chartered accountant. I want to thank my friend and sister, Sheon Louis, for encouraging me and praying with me. Glory be to God in the highest. Oh, no, man. Hey, chartered accountant. Hey, she reminded me of when I sat for that exam. Hey, chartered accountant. Jesus, I can. Hey, how many accountants are here? Jesus. Oh, no, man, thank God you did not give up. Many gave up and they are now sweating now. When I was writing my own, it was the same. I almost gave up, but God knows I never gave up. I will whisper how many times I sat for it. Eh? Can I whisper? 16 times. Hey! I qualified, Abby. Oh. Did they write it on my head that it was 16 times? The people that did it three times and left, they are regretting today. Ah, if I had known, I should have continued. Oh, my shame. Hey, hey, don't give up. There's nothing in life you should give up. If you have your God, don't give up. God, God bless you, Sister Nome. Encourage her and encourage me. Praise the Lord. Our God is good. As an accountant, I've retired that many years now. Worked with it for 35 years. Who knew? Those that did not do it, did not even get to the level I got to. I say, praise the Lord. Uh -huh. You want to give? You can't give up. Oh. The, last the last testimony. All thanks to God for his faithfulness all through the year 2023. My family and I relocated abroad last year, 2022. During the period, my wife was in school for her master's degree. While I helped the kids settle in school, while I was also in search for a job. After applying and interviewing for several jobs, I secured one with sponsorship for, my fa for myself and family. Four months later, my wife concluded her master's in December 2022 and wanted to take a break of one or two months before searching for a job. However, while still in school, she applied for jobs and interviewed for three. Two weeks after the submission of her project in December, she secured a job in an international NGO. In March 2023, she graduated and received awards as the best graduating student of her class, in addition to receiving the Cost Tutors Prize 
our kids also settled well in school. Please, just clap for them. During this period, my father had challenges with his spine, which he had complained of in immense pain for over two years. And due to this, had done two surgeries for his pain in Nigeria, but both were unsuccessful as the pain remained and became crucial. He came to the UK to have his, this checkup, and first he was on medication for about three months, but the pain remained. It had affected his movement as well as his balance. We complained to his doctor, who told us that the only alternative was to have another surgery to alleviate the pain and correct the errors that was done in the previous surgeries. Fast forward, the surgery went well and he was there through recovery, and he went through recovery. After he left the hospital, he got home, he got home visits by the medical team who checked on him and took blood tests weekly. All these were at a cost of 1,000 pounds per day including the period of recovery at the hospital. Again, two months later, his feet began to swell, so we had to take him again to carry out additional tests to check his kidneys. Thankfully, all was okay with his kidneys. At the time he left in July 2023, we had an estimated bill of approximately 50,000 pounds. During this period, we had written to the NHS of our intention for a payment plan, which they agreed. We continued the payment from July to November, but we then asked for a downward review of the payment plan mid-November, which was rejected to our surprise. Within the first week of December, our month of abundant gifts, the NHS wrote us that they were writing of the medical bill. Don't forget, the estimated bill was 50,000 pounds. So the actual was a lot more than that. We remain thankful to God that within the first year of our relocation, Jehovah blessed us all around with abundant gifts. Praise the Lord. Uh, but even today, 31st, you can still get your gift. Sure, you know. Praise God. And the last one. Good day, Pastor Jimmy. My name is Patience. I'm a librarian and I live in Minnesota. And this is my testimony. I spoke with my mother on Christmas Day on my way home from work. My dad called me 11.30 p.m. on Tuesday, December 27. I was sleeping for work the next day. When I woke up, I saw like six to seven missed calls from both my sister and dad. I called my sister back and she told me my mother was rich, was taken to the emergency. My mother was having shortness of breath and chest pains. Thanks to God that she is doing great. I kept reading Psalm 23 over and over again. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Thanks for all your prayers and preaching every week. If you notice, I'm always on your Facebook page and Instagram because I just love watching you preach God's wisdom to your people. Ah, <laughs> May God continue to give you grace and strength, more grace and blessings upon your life, Pastor Jimmy. You will keep doing greater things in life. In Jesus' name. I am patient. Praise the Lord. Our God is good. I say our God is good. Give it to Jesus.
don't go out at all. Because, because I'm, I'm afraid that everywhere I go is embarrassment that follows me. When, when people see me coming, they cross to the other side because everything and everyone that I touched became unclean. See, a normal woman would bleed two to five days once a month. But I have been bleeding every day for the past 12 years. The doctors in their medical terms called it a hemorrhage. I have spent all that I have, everything, consulting with doctors far and wide. But they could never tell me the cause nor prefer a cure to this ailment. I'm tired. I'm tired. I've, I've, I've come to the end of my rope. I, I don't know what to do anymore. But, but then I, I, I heard about a rabbi, a, a teacher. They, they said that he was full of kindness and compassion. And everywhere he went, he healed everybody. So this rabbi can heal me too. He can heal me too, right? But, but how do I reach this rabbi? If, if I try to go near him, they won't even let me come near him. But, but, but I have to see this rabbi. I need to see this rabbi. I, I cannot continue like this. Twelve years, I can't do this. How do, I, how do I see this rabbi? I have to see this. I, I can touch his clothes. If I can just get close enough, I can touch his clothes and, and I will be healed. I can touch his clothes and I will be healed. So that is what I did. That's what I did. They, they told me that he was going to go through the market on his way to Capernaum. So I went. I went there ahead of them and, and I hid. I had to hide because if I, didn't, if I didn't hide, they wouldn't have let me go near him. So I hid. I hid by the stall and I waited. I heard them coming. There was a crowd. I was afraid. My, my heart was beating. My heart was beating loud in my chest. And I had to stop breathing. I was afraid that I was afraid that they would hear the sound of my breathing and they would cast me aside. So I waited. I waited. And, and, and then I saw him. I saw the Messiah. Pe people were people were, were tearing and they were pushing each other. They were shouting, Master Rabbi! Everybody wanted to touch him, but they needed to touch him. So so I crouched and I crawled. I, I crawled through their feet and in the dust. I crawled and and when I got to him, I, I, I reached, I reached, and I, and, I, and I, I touched the helm of his garment. I, 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 and all of a sudden, the blood dried up. For 12 years, of bleeding stopped. I knew it. I, I felt it in my body. I was healed. I was healed. I was healed. I was healed after 12 years. I was healed after 12 years of waiting. He touched me. He touched me And oh, the joy that fills my soul <laughs> Something happened And now I know He touched me <laughs> And made I, I had to scurry back. I had to scurry back because they mustn't see me there. If they had seen me there, I would have been in trouble. I scurried back. I, but then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he stopped. And he said, Who touched me? 
His disciples said, Rabbi, everybody's pushing against you. How can you ask that? He said, No! Who touched me? I have felt power leave my body. I was afraid. I was afraid. I was afraid. I, I came forward and I said, Master, it was a. I touched you. Have mercy. And then he looked at me. He looked at me with, with kindness and compassion. And he said to me, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. <laughs> now I can stand in public. Now I can speak in public. Now I can touch and be touched. Because, because I met a man who, who, who took away my shame and gave me a new name. I met a man, Jesus. ever felt broken? So broken that you realize money can good health. I have all the money, but my daughter, <laughs> my daughter is sick. <laughs> I looked at her on a sick bed, and she said to me, Daddy, please help me. I don't want to die. <laughs> And as a man, I felt empty and useless. I couldn't help my own daughter. And then I heard of a man who was in the business of turning water to wine. Now demons feeding the multitude and most importantly healing the sick. Where is this man? I need to find him. My daughter. I was told he's in the market. Okay, I will go and I will find him. Oh, a great multitude. Oh no, no, my daughter cannot die. I will fight my way through the crowd. I fought my way and I moved. I moved because the only thing on my head was, Daddy, I don't want to die. Please help me. <laughs> my daughter, you will not die. You will live to declare the glory in the living land. I promise you, you are a covenant. I pushed and pushed and pushed till I got to the master's feet and he looked at me and helped me up. Sir, master, good sir, sir, please sir, I, no, not me, my daughter, please, she needs your help. I've tried everything, nothing seems to be working. And with a calm, still voice, do not be afraid. Just believe. Just believe. So, I believe. 
believe you. I believe you. Let's, let's just go. Let's just go. And as we were moving, we were moving. I saw someone from my household. Thomas, what are you doing outside of the house? Sir, it's your daughter. I'm aware. My daughter is sick. I have brought the Messiah. He's coming to heal her. Sir, your daughter is... Mm, mm. No. The Messiah said to me, do not be afraid. Just believe. I'm not going to listen to you. And as I got closer to her room, the cry from the room got louder. Everyone was crying. And I got to my child's bed. She was dead. dream. Before I knew what was happening, I was surrounded by four hefty men. Two pulling me by the hands, two dragging me from the bed. I knew why they were here. I had just been caught with a married man. And they were here for my head. I started to claw at every piece of fabric I could find, anything to cover the little dignity. I had left. I cried as they dragged me into the streets. They dragged me. I screamed for help, but the people on the streets spat in my face. I looked back. I scanned around for my lover, but he was nowhere to be found. I was alone in this. I was alone to blame. I was alone to blame. And they took me and tossed me in the middle of the temple where a man taught. He sat and he spoke. People around me, picking up stones, getting ready to hurl them at me and dish their own version of justice. I knew this was the end. I'm finished. That's what I thought. That was the only thing in my head. I'm finished. This was the day. This was the day that 
I would die. I knew it. I felt it within me. So I crouched my head between my knees, waiting for the impact. I braced for impact. And then I heard a man's voice. And he said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. I mean, the words were clear as day. I knew what it meant, but I did not understand. So I looked around me. And the people who had held these stones slowly backed away. And I could hear the thud of the stones as they hit the ground. I could hear the thud of the stones as they hit the ground. I knew their intentions for me. I saw them back away, but I did not know the intentions of this man who stood before me. And then he moved to me. And he said, woman, where are your accusers? I looked around and indeed, they were gone. My accusers were nowhere to be found. And I said, they're not here. And he said, likewise, I condemn you not. Go and sin no more. At that moment, I received, I received the words that he spoke to me I received the life that he spoke to me I knew I was no longer bound by sexual immorality I knew I had a new testimony all because I met a man Jesus In life, we all go through problems and trials. The next stage of problems is predicaments. If you can't move an arm for a day, you have a problem. If you're bedridden for a month, you have a predicament. But when you are afflicted and feeble and lame for one year, two years, five years, 15 years, 25 years, 35 years, 38 years. Sweetheart, you have a tribulation. That is high level problem. That was the story of my life. Afflicted and lame with pain in my body for 38 years. I drank from the cup of sorrow and bitterness. My clouds were dark. I prayed for death, but it wouldn't come. I was helped by men and taken beside a pool. It was a beautiful pool with five porches. But sweetheart, it wasn't your usual pool where you go to have fun. This was a pool of affliction. All around me were bunch of afflicted, bunch of diseases, bunch of sicknesses waiting for an opportunity to step in the pool. For at an appointed time, when the angel of the Lord stirred the pool, anyone who stepped in got healed. And for 38 years of my life, I wasted and lost every chance of stepping in and getting my healing. So I resorted to my faith. I will die a lame man. My problems are impossible to solve. Everyone was testifying, and I was left with just one question. God, when? <laughs> but as they say, that there are many days in the life of a man, and there is one day, one day, someone, a man, I didn't know him. He walked to me. He asked me a question. He was kind. His countenance was beaming. He said, sir, do you want to be made whole? And I looked at him, I said, sir, she was okay. For 38 years I've been beside this pool. I am lame, you can see. Why do you ask? Of course I want to be made whole, but is there anything like being whole? Is it even possible? I have wasted all my life. It is over for me, sir. Can I ever be made whole? 
can my condition change? And the man said to me, Alas, he knew me better than I knew myself. The next seven words he spoke to me will change my life forever. He said, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And at that moment, I felt a strong sensation run through my spine. It was like the rush of water. My limbs were shaking. My lame feet began to feel like they could move. It was at that point I realized that when I was worried and couldn't sleep, he was walking behind the scene. Oh, 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 oh. And just like a toddler, I got up, I took the first leap, the second, and in a moment, I could walk, I could jump, I could run, I was healed. <laughs> my God did not abandon me. The one who does miracles has done my own. God did not forsake me. What was impossible with men for 38 years, he has done it. And in that excitement, I ran into the street, and there as I was rejoicing, I met this bunch of religious people who seemed more like bad belly. And they said to me, sir, who is this one who performed a miracle on a Sabbath day? And, and, yen, yen, yen. I said, hold up. Calm down. I do not know about you, but I met someone. He was kind. He loved upon me. He bore my afflictions. He healed my body. He made me whole. Sweetheart, I met a man. Jesus. Hallelujah. Vibrant and vivacious, young and ambitious. Bethrothed to the love of my life, I looked forward to the rest of my life. Suddenly, an angel appeared like a man. I was to have a child without a man, to conceive by the Spirit of God, a child who is the Son of God. Confused, how could this be? In my mind, there was a clutter, but in my belly, there was a flutter. It flooded my heart with joy. I was to birth a baby boy, and the baby came. A tad early, we couldn't prepare. A manger was all we found, and there the Savior was laid. My child grew like a normal child, but not really preferring the temple to the playground. From boy to man he grew. He went about doing good, feeding, healing, saving, delivering. He walked on water. He raised the dead. Even demons fled at his command. With joy I watched. With pride I built. My son, the miraculous turning water to wine like a game. But alas, death loomed. Death? My son, the miraculous, the savior of the world, the miracle walker, was to be crucified? Confused. How could this be? As they nailed him to the cross, the holes were drilled in my heart. Oh, Yeshua, my joy was drowned in blood. My strength failed. I wished to die. How could a mother outlive her son? How could my son be snatched by death? <sighs> Whispers of wonder turned 
listening to shouts of joy. The tomb was empty. My son had risen. My heart was filled with joy and my mouth with laughter. Indeed, I am blessed amongst women. My son has come back to me, but not really. His assignment was greater. He ascended into heaven to Yahweh the Almighty. Then I received understanding and my eyes were enlightened. This child I bore is one with God, my son, yet my Lord. With his death, he gave us life. With his blood, he paid the price. For as many as believe in him, he gave the power to become sons of God. Spirit 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know the scripture says when the Lord turns around the captivity of Zion. How many of us are going to enter this year, 2024, in freedom? I don't think there are many people that are seeing this. How many people like that skit that told us about the men they met? This is the 11th year. But in the 12th year, the woman with the issue of blood became free. 2024 is becoming the 12th year for somebody. If that is your word of victory, can you shout and say amen? amen. Can you shout and give the Lord a bigger shout of praise? Amen. Now, we are about to enter into another session. Tell your neighbor another session. There is something you need for that session. And it is a praise on your feet. Are you ready? See, it is because you don't know what God is about to do. That is why you are contemplating praise. Because we know God is about to do the exceeding, abundant, above what we can ever think or imagine. We are going to tell our neighbor that give me space. Because there is a set of people that are coming on stage. Oh, and boy, do they worship. Oh, boy, do they know how to praise. Uh, they remind me about the scripture that says that let's praise God with a harp uh, and with strings. Uh, and I know that this may be unconventional for some people, but this praise will jack you up into victory. This praise will take you to another level. With Jesus' joy, with the joy of the Holy Ghost, uh, I want you to make welcome on stage. G, force, as they bless us with a wonderful rendition for God. Amen. Wherever you are tonight, give Jesus your praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'd like to thank um, Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Tolu for this great privilege to be here tonight. 
We do not take this for granted. Thank you so much. Thank you. Fountain of Life Church, give Jesus your praise. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Please, can we have the piano up now? Hallelujah. <laughs> your hands to Jesus and say here we are lifting our hands to you yes. here we are giving you thanks for all you've done as we pray and worship your holy name you are here dwelling within our praise for every answered prayer for always being there in this year 2023 I for love that hears us when we call For I'm the because when we fall Oh Lord, you have always been Right beside us How many of you believe? Leading us all along the way We made it we are here today because of you. Here we are. Lift your hands to the heavens. Here we are. Lifting our hands. Lifting our hands to you. Here we are. Here we are. Giving you thanks. Giving you thanks. Worship your whole and worship your holy name. You are king. You are king. Well, if we then I praise wherever you are tonight, put your hands together and give the Lord your shout. Praise if you know that the Lord has been good to you, it is okay to lose composure in the presence of God. Jump on your feet and give Him your shout of praise. Ladies and gentlemen, would like to tell you something, and it is called in the sky listen in the book of Psalm 148 from verse 1 it says praise him in the heavens praise him in the highest of heights in the year 2024 someone is here tonight you are moving from glory to glory if you are the one I'm talking about jump on your feet Let's go! One, one, two, two, one, two! Ow! Jump, 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 jump! Put your hands together! Today, forever, nobody is like you. Do you believe that? You will never change. Yes, today, today, forever, nobody loves me like you. I worship. 
Let me tell you something. Look, you might be looking at a group of young people jumping up and down. Yes. One of the spectacular things that will happen to you in 2024. Yes, let me tell you, it is what we call quantum leap. So, how do you express the testimonies that come with quantum leap? You don't stay in one position. You stay because you are moving from glory to glory. To yes. glory! Are you ready to miss your Let's promotion? Go. Let's go! One, one, two, two, three! three. In spiritual exercise, you can decide to run. You can decide to jump. But by this time, 2024, 2024, I promise you, God will surprise you. Hey! So are you ready to run? We are ready. Are you ready to jump? Let us show you the Lord Brennan's We are the Lord Renet let the Hallelujah! 
Wow! Before we sit down for the last set of testimonies, some energy. Wow! 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 Yeah! 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 Release the sound that will break the destiny. Yabakata, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let the devils know. Let them walk on their head. 2024. We are coming. We are ready. We are going in victory. Somebody shout. Before we continue with our regular scheduled programming, for the next 30 seconds, the atmosphere is primed. Whatever you are believing God for, settle it in the next 30 seconds. Begin to decree into your 2024. 2024 must yield for me. 2024 will be a year like no other. The lights must fall for me in pleasant places. 2024, I am more than a conqueror. The Egyptians I saw in 2023, I will see them no more forever. The affliction that I dealt with in 2023, I am living it in this year. It cannot cross over. For the next 10 seconds, heavens are open. Decree and declare. Speak it to your 2024. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Father, we thank you. Because we know it's already done. Look at your neighbor. Say 2024 was a great year. Find somebody else. Tell them 2024 was an exceptional year. 2024 was my year of victory. Put your hands together for what God has already done. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm sure you know 2024 is not ordinary. Please, I beg you, just take your seat. We are obviously taking off into 2024. This is the last round of testimonies. I'm going to read this very quickly. I want to testify to the goodness of God in my life. I came home to Nigeria in December 2021 and attended Thursday showers. After the service, I saw an old friend who dragged me to the altar where we both knelt down and prayed. This is something I'll never do on my own, but I went along with him and told God about my upcoming IVF treatment. I asked God to give me a baby boy, and after the prayers, I believed that I had received my miracle baby. About a week after I left Nigeria, I had my sixth embryo transfer. Prior to that time, I had had five unsuccessful transfers using three different clinics, clinics and I spent so much money. But this time, God intervened, and after a Christmas Day embryo transfer, I got pregnant followed by a very smooth pregnancy. I delivered my bouncing baby boy in 2022 at almost 45 years old. This can only be God, and to him alone be all the glory. I'll be back to this altar to pray for and receive my baby girl. This is Joko from out of the country. This is another one. I'm giving my testimony to the glory of God and to reassure us that the word works. I recently relocated to the U.S. from Nigeria finally in 2023. I went into the year with very high hopes and the Lord surprised me beyond my wildest dreams. There was divine speed to getting all my immigration status settled. The testimony is how the Lord blessed me miraculously with a job in November 
a month of glorious encounters. This is written by an over 65 year old woman. So, My desire was for a full time job at the company I applied to. But after several attempts, the only openings were part time positions and at night. Also, it was at a location very far from home. I was not sure I wanted that, but was advised by a friend to interview for it and get into the company. Thank God I obeyed. It was a telephone interview and I prayed for a glorious encounter and a creative miracle. This is a lady that sent a message to me and said, I don't miss any of the services. The first words that came out of the mouth of the HR manager was, a full-time position just opened up this morning. The hours are daytime and she mentioned the location. Oh my word, exactly what I was believing God for. Exactly the time and location I was trusting God for. He created it for me that morning. Magnify the Lord with me. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Roy, our God who sees us. Thank you, Pastor Jimmy, for your prophetic proclamations. Indeed, the word works. I just want to return all glory to God for victory. Last year, my husband wanted to buy two cars to use for Uber. And he met the dealers and they started bargaining. Somehow, he sent the money and before we knew it, the money landed in the hands of a lady he met there. Long story short, she began to say that the money was a gift from him to her and there is no car. He went to the police and the lady was arrested and she agreed to pay the money in part. She paid the first one million and another 200,000. The next, and then all these, because it had, not, it had now become a court case. The next hearing was January 10th of this year. Immediately he finished from the court and came out. He was arrested and taken to the police station. On finding out what his offense was, he was told the same lady accused him of rape and that they are not going to release him. He was there for about three days before they finally agreed to release him on bail with so many conditions. It was a terrible situation. The shock of the incidents landed him in hospital and his blood pressure went up to about 202 over 124. He was at the hospital for over a week, so he couldn't go back to the station the day he was asked to come back with his lawyer. So they started hunting for him. They even went to the hospital and saw him there, but they were not satisfied. The NGO the lady contacted were not happy that he was even released in the first place. So they were going to rearrest him with no intention of releasing him again. So from the hospital, he didn't come home again to avoid being arrested. His lawyers were the one representing him, but the police were still searching for him everywhere. This went on for over four months. He couldn't step foot into our house, nor even see the children. It was a terrible situation, but we, we didn't know how we would come out of it. On February 1st or 2nd, on a Sunday, Pastor Taiwo said, there's somewhere, someone here you have been wrongly accused, and it's a serious one. Come out. It is a gang up. So I came out, and he prayed and said, God says they will confess. And I said, Amen. We spent all we had in this case, and even had to sell our land, yet it was not enough, because it was in millions. At some point, we were even begging her not to return the money again, in exchange for his freedom. But she and her lawyers refused. We kept reminding God of what he said through our past, as former senior pastor, Pastor Taiwo, and kept holding on to his word. He couldn't, we couldn't pay our fees nor rent. Even feeding was difficult because every couple went into the case. Fast forward to months back, he was able to come home and we started seeing a way. In November, the lawyer called the prosecutor that they wanted to see our lawyer and talk that she wants to withdraw the case. A lawyer said we shouldn't accept what she has to tell us because she has to tell us why and what the real truth is. She said she wanted to take the money and that since he was serious about collecting the money, she had to come up with a rape case just to frustrate him. The friend that introduced this car people to my husband, apparently they were part of the plan. He said he asked him for money but he refused to give him, yet he was able to buy cars worth six million. May God save us from dangerous people. As of today, a lawyer has put on some conditions which they have to agree with before we accept. I'm here to return glory to God. He did not let the devil succeed in his plans. The God who is all seen came through the word from, a, from Pastor Taiwo. God did not just remove the shame, but then God began to honor us. In the second week of January, people from his hometown came and honored him 
along with the Deputy Governor of the State, the Secretary to the Government, and all other dignitaries, we have come to return all glory to God, the only one who could have delivered us. I'm now going to call Enoch Victory, Enoch Ojo Timi. Come quickly. You're going to read your testimony, and I'm going to read another one. My name is Ola Oluwa, Oluwa Tofarati. I resumed school into my 300 level for the first semester on the 4th of September. And on the 6th of September, I fell ill. My roommate noticed a swelling on my lower neck. It was small, but noticeable. Being a typical Nigerian, I thought it was just a boil, and it would go down after applying Ori, sheer butter. That one is for beauty. And so I did that. On the 5th of September, it got bigger. By the 6th of September, I started finding it difficult to turn my neck to certain angles. And so I went to my school clinic, but it was closed. I then went to the main hospital. By this time, I was feeling weak. The next morning, my mates had started classes, but I couldn't go because I was in so much pain. I went to the clinic on the 7th, and the doctors prescribed antibiotics and painkillers. I could hardly eat because of how big the swelling had gotten. But I managed because I can't use my drugs on an empty stomach. I started using the medication and the swelling only got worse. It got so big I couldn't turn my neck. I could only look straight and if I turn at all, I'll have to move my entire body. I went back to the clinic and luckily I met the same doctor and he was genuinely shocked because the swelling should have gone down. He then decided to run a blunt blood test and told me I had an infection in my lymph nodes and I'll be placed on drip with a very strong antibiotic because if the, if the infection wasn't attacked immediately, at that moment, it could spread to my brain. He didn't have explain much to me as I'm in the medical field myself. I understood the gravity of the infection and its direction of spreading. I was scared, genuinely scared. I called my parents and told them. I called a few friends because I had to eat. One of them brought me food. And when she came, I cried so much because I was scared and thought I was going to die. She prayed for me and left as she had a class to attend. I'd been praying all this while, but it never felt like I had unanswered prayers. It was more like I was waiting for, waiting for a perfect answer. I was to be on drip and a series of injections for three days. Every night I'll go to my room and pray. I'll take anointing oil and rub a little on the swelling. On the third day I was feeling better. The swelling, swelling had gone down. On the 14th I was able to turn my neck to a certain extent, which I couldn't do before. I kept disturbing the doctor because the swelling was still there. It wasn't big. But I didn't want it there at all. I just kept saying, I don't want to die. I'm to turn 18 this year, and I felt most importantly I hadn't fulfilled purpose. That night, I got to my room and I prayed hard. I told God, he knows I have a purpose in his kingdom, that I was even yet to figure out at that point. But I tell him, kept telling God, I can't die yet. I woke up on the 15th, the swelling was barely there, and I didn't feel any pain, it was gone. The morning of the 16th, nobody could tell I had a swelling on my neck a few days before. I could turn my neck with ease. There's no scar or evidence of the swelling. And it has not reoccurred to you today. And we dare say it will never return. I just give God praise. Yes, Enoch, come quickly, please. Okay, you have it on your phone. You want to read it from your phone? Let's encourage Enoch. Good morning, pastors. Good morning, church. Good morning, everyone. Evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Victory Inoko Jyotimi, and I'm here to thank God for life, divine provision, and for the opportunity to be standing here right now. This year, February, a few days to my birthday, when I was still under the boarding facilities of my school. The school got raided by land grabbers on a Saturday around 6 a.m. They were all armed with various weapons, which put our safety at, as hostelers at risk. And because the school occupied a large mass of land at about six acres, they came to hijack the school's field, which was about five plots, Apart from sporting activities, the school of the school, it was also used as a means of income for the school because it was sometimes rented out to churches for crusades and other ceremonial activities. 
If you do seized forcefully from the school and also demarcated from the school with a tall wall built by the land grabbers on the same day. Soon enough, we hostelers who, who were put to hiding were visited by officials from Lagos State and Alausa and so on and so forth. But I've come to thank God that no one was hurt and he, he really helped us. Um, parents were being called by the school authorities. All parents were called to come pick up their children. But my mom wasn't at Lagos by that time. She was far away for an assignment. So my mom had to call people around her, her friends and relatives that she knew. But all was to no avail. So she had no choice than to call one of our mothers in faith. We then was at administration but sent her driver to pick me up. I was picked up at about 7 p.m. in the evening, being the last person to leave the hostel. I'm also grateful to God that he has helped me thus far and I've come to thank him for good relationship because I've been with this family since then. And I've come to thank God that it's been a Christian family. It's been nice staying with them. They are our CCG pastors and I've been going from their house to school every day. It hasn't been easy, but the grace of God has kept me and preserved me. At this point, I also, I've also come to thank God for using me while I was in hostel. He made me an ambassador and he used me as a vessel. He made me able and gave me the boldness to preach to even my seniors. I led my seniors to Christ. I led my juniors to Christ. I formed a prayer group within the juniors in the hostel. God made me, uh, he helped me to perform exploits to the point that I was even at a point made the captain of the hostel, which was a very highly ranked position. I've come to thank God for a sacrificial mother and for a good church. Like Pastor Jimmy would say, in context, I've not come to stir um, negative feelings or emotions in anyone, but to me, Fountain has been the best church ever. I've come to thank God for being born in Fountain. I've come to thank Him for the grace. I've come to thank Him that Fountain has been there for me since I was a child. I've come to thank Him that Fountain has helped me, even in my hard times. Fountain has never left me. I've come to thank him for my mom. I've come to thank him for my family. I've also come to thank him for the opportunity. I've come to thank him for this year. I've come to thank him for my mom. I've come to thank him for her birthday, which was in May. I've come to thank him that he even favored us to the extent that he touched the heart of one of our friends to rent an apartment for us for free. And also, because of our distance, coming to church hasn't been easy, but one of our old school friends also permitted us to lodge in his hotel every time we were around without paying a dime, which has also enabled us to come to church every Sunday and for Riyaz House every Saturday. I've come to thank God. I've come to really glorify Him and magnify Him because He has been good to me. Praise God. And I've also come to thank everyone who contributed to the Teen Summer Camp, which held in August. It really impacted me, it turned my life around for good because normally I'm a very, very shy person, but 
God used that program to motivate me and brought me out. I've come to thank him also for that. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'll just rush through the last set of testimonies. My name is Oluwa Tony. I had a terrible year in 2022. I left, lost everything I held onto as dear. Things that I thought made me complete as a young person building her career. It was so bad that I kept telling God at some point, one more disaster and I'm out. I was determined to kill myself and the devil gave me so many ideas that I could write a book on 1,000 ways to die in Lagos. But I give glory to God. He did not allow me. In January, 23, 20, January 2023, I started a new job at a fintech company. It was a dream come true. People say there's no perfect job, but this job ticked off all the boxes. By the end of the first quarter, the CEO mentioned during a town hall meeting that the company was running at a loss and was on the verge of a shutdown. They were going to start paying, having pay cuts, layoffs, and the likes. Other companies were increasing salaries because of the economic changes, but my company was cutting ours by 30%. Even safe, how much were they paying me? But that wasn't the scary part for me. If they decided to start laying people off, I'll be the first out because I was the newest in the team. The company finally shut down in October and I fell ill that same day. It started as a fever and a headache. I didn't think much of it, but the next day I couldn't get out of bed. I dragged myself to the pharmacy and this small voice in my head kept saying, you don't have a job, you don't have money, you don't even know what to eat today. Do you know all these problems will go away if you just die? But I kept declaring, oh, again in my mind, for the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of me and quickens my mortal body. Even though I'd been so traumatized, I decided I wasn't ready to die. By Friday morning, my mom had to send to pick me up to come back home. That same Friday, three companies contacted me and told me to complete some timed assess assessments before Sunday. I mustered some energy and took the first company's assessment. I knew I failed it because I couldn't even finish the sections on time. Company B, that I sent my assessment results, sent me the rejection the following day. Company C called me for an interview and asked if I could resume immediately. The pay was juicy, but the working hours were risky because I had to resume at, leave home as early as 4.30 and return home at, return home at 1 a.m. Ah. The promise that day, as Otolu said, Call upon me and I will answer you. <laughs> and I will show you great and mighty things. Pastor Solu said, take that matter to God first before taking it to any human being. I took it to the Holy Spirit and the answer was a big no. It was loud and clear. My mom and my sister said no. But me and Gekko could not hit. I thought about the bills that were piling up and guess what? I wrote them and said I accepted the offer. But they went radio silent. I sent emails, SMSs, nothing. After two weeks of chasing them, I accepted my fate and realized that God closed that door. In the midst of all of this, the Holy Spirit reached, told me to reach out to the head of the team that I wanted to join Company A on LinkedIn and let her know that I was sick when I did those tests and I'd like an opportunity to retake the assessment. I obeyed even though I kept telling myself it was a long shot. What were the chances of getting that kind of opportunity? The lady responded and said there were over 200 applicants for the same role, but she would check in with HR. I followed up after a while, I didn't hear anything. But I kept remembering what Pastor Jimmy kept saying. God is opening doors for you in places you are not qualified to enter. All this happened at the end of October, first week of November, a month of glorious encounters. The company took their sweet time. I got tired of following up and kept wondering if they had already found a better qualified person. I was watching online the day the lady got her creative miracle of 6.5 million for her school fees. I was so excited. I didn't know when I got angry and started crying and telling God that, ah, I wasn't asking for 6.5 million. All I'm asking for is a job to keep body and soul together. The following week, all the interviews that had been hanging started coming in. Company A finally sent the meeting invite. I had that interview on Wednesday in the last week of November. And by Thursday, they said I passed and invited me in the final stage. During the interview, my interviewer congratulated me 
on making it to the final stage that there were actually almost 300 applicants. She told me she was so impressed with my performance and it was a definite yes from her and I should expect an offer letter. After the interview, I rushed down to church for the December anointing service because it could only have been God. I'm happy to announce that Christmas came early. The offer letter came in and I'm resuming on the 3rd of January. The job, the job is fully remote and I don't have to leave my room except when I'm coming to church. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. If not for him, I'll be still job hunting now. This is from Blessing. I'd been following Fountain of Life Church online for some months now. But this December, I decided to come physically. My first time of coming, somebody dashed me money that I gave people out of it. I never knew abundant gifts was the theme of the month. I never knew God was planning for me. I came for Thursday showers. Pastor Jimmy asked us to dance as if we had gotten what we wanted. Is it marriage? Is it finances? I was, dancing as, I was dancing as if I'd gotten the wedding ring on my wedding day. That evening I was at home. My past friend, we've been together for years. He showed up and proposed to me. I said, I am the one he wants to spend the rest of his life with. Ah, I said just like that. Abundant gift. He's now making an email to come and see my family. Pastor Jimmy, God bless you. May God continue to fill you with more anointing. This is from Sister Stella. In April, I went to work leaving my child and nephew in the house with their food in the kitchen. While at work, after about three hours, I decided to go and repair my phone at Computer Village and a colleague offered to take me. After a while, I just decided that I didn't think I wanted to go. He asked me and I just said, I just don't want to go, I'm tired. He said, okay, I'll drop you at home since we're going to pass by your home. While on the way home, I decided to, you know, I just decided to go home. On getting home, my little child opened the door. While I asked for the older one, who is my nephew, and he said he was sleeping. Then I proceeded to the kitchen to find out that the food I left was only taken by my child, while the other one for the older child, my nephew, was there. My child now told me he refused to eat beans, but rather prepared sausage and egg. <laughs> I moved towards my room closer to this and found him sleeping with food on the bed. I decided to call him, but he didn't answer. After two to three calls, I moved close to tap him. He didn't answer. I then carried him. He was lifeless. I poured water on him, shouted for help. More than four people had to come. It was a struggle to carry him. Finally, we carried him to a nearby hospital on the street. But that, the traffic that day was something else. They brought him out. CPR was done. There and then, the doctor shook his head and said, and I was like, God, please help me. Finally, he was placed on oxygen. I wasn't allowed him because I was just, you know, I was shattered. Finally, he started regurgitating, regurgitating, regurgitating. It's because I'm rushing. And the doctor said I should be thanking God because he was brought in early with 72% oxygen in his brain. And if it had gone lower, the story would not have been the same. Would not have been the same. I came today to thank God for his mercies and my family for not letting the devil have his way. This is from Sister Rolayo. I joined Fountain of Life in 2021. It's a tough time in my life. That week, my first IVF treatment had just failed and my heart was broken. Everybody around me told me to be strong, but I was struggling. I came to church and Pastor Taiwo's first words were, be strong in the Lord, and I do strength from that scripture. In 2022, I got the instruction to try the IVF again and we went ahead. We encountered so many hiccups. The, go the doctor wanted to cancel the procedure because my eggs were not responding as expected. We told him to give us, give us a few days. The next Thursday showers, one of the pastors that was leading the showers told us to rejoice and celebrate. I remember how powerful the choir administration was that day and I felt victorious. I knew I had received my miracle. The next day we went back to the doctor and the follicles had doubled in size and we proceeded. The doctor said if I got pregnant again, he would know that God wanted to put him to shame. Well, I did and had my baby February this year. She was born premature and had a lot of complications, but through it all, God was with us. A few months later, we got news that she was born with a syndrome and her liver was affected. We had been receiving treatment for this, but recently the doctor said she would need a transplant. We started on God's one again. Last Thursday, Pastor Jimmy gave a word to someone online. He specifically said, you are online, praying for the healing of your daughter who needs a transplant. He said, Ephesians 3.20, which is the word 
He gave, and that is what the Spirit had been dropping in my heart. I'm sending this testimony as evidence of my faith because I believe that in this month of abundant gifts, that word was too precise. That God has given my daughter a new liver and a new biliary system. He has also given me a new reproductive system. And I have spoken the word. I will come to church physically to Nigeria to testify of this miracle in Jesus' name. The last testimony. We got married in August 2018. I've been pregnant five times. I conceived and became pregnant by April of 2019. But by July, the day after my birthday, I had to have a TMR, termination for medical reason, to discontinue the pregnancy. I'd been joining Pastor Tolu's prayer group, and that really strengthened me. During the crossover service of 2019, we, my husband and I picked the exact same promise, which was Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help times in type of trouble. We honestly were not smiling. We trouble again. February, March 2020 came with the news of COVID and all that came with it. We had to stay at home. You can imagine with our situation, not being able to go for hospital appointments, finding ways around the compulsory hospital appointment. The situation was terrifying. I recall that one of the pastors called me on behalf of Pastor Taiwo and I mentioned I was pregnant and she encouraged me to continue to pray the pregnancy confessions by the church. I woke up early on a Sunday in July, 36 weeks and one day, and realized that my amniotic fluid was leaking. So we went to the clinic for a scan. I was advised to do a CS on the Monday, and I had the surgery and was moved to recovery. We had started calling family members and giving them good news of the birth. But an hour later, the gynecologist and pediatrician both came into the room with long faces and broke to news was that our baby had passed to glory. How will we call everybody? Most days were hard, but some were easy. But COVID covered my shame, so most people didn't even know I was ever pregnant. And indeed, Pastor Tolu's prayer group helped me immensely. By October, early November, I found out I was pregnant again. I was filled with trepidation, and we booked a prenatal test. The elderly doctor who was there wasn't there, and some young doctor kept pricking me. And we eventually, I went for another doctor's appointment and I was given the devastating news no fetal activity detected I couldn't believe it it was said I had a miscarriage by this time two days to Christmas I had to fix an appointment for an evacuation to say that broke me was an understatement I couldn't I couldn't pray I recall my sister asking me to join prayers and I asked her where was God to allow all this much to happen eventually I couldn't fight with God for long but I could worship my way through it. 2021 came, I was desperate to get pregnant. I was advised to con consider IVF, which I'd done twice and failed. At work in April, anyway, my periods did not come. When it should have, I was excited. But that day at work, on the 1st of April, I felt a big clot of blood. Funny enough, I was calm. I didn't even tell my husband on time and had a normal conversation with him later to another party that, well, actually, this had happened. While on our way, a strange number called the hospital to check on me and asking when I was coming back again for another round of IVF and also informed me the price of 2.5 million. By the time I got to the hospital, I was bleeding, but the bleeding, or rather, by the time I got to the office, the bleeding had stopped. I told my hus husband offhand and we went to the hospital. I was scanned and the doctor showed me two sacks which he said were empty, but we'll rescan in two weeks. I was on injections and drugs. But to the glory of God, my EDD was November 24, but my waters broke on November 17. I went into hospital in the US. I was wheeled into the theater. God was kind to me, and I was praying worship. And indeed, to the glory of God, I had my beautiful baby. And as I desired, the date synchronized. You know those that give birth in America. You can give birth on one day in America. is another date here in Nigeria. But as she prayed, it was the same day. Her spiritual food was from the Fountain of Life Church and the prayer platform of Pastor Tolu. I read the entirety of this testimony to encourage you. It doesn't matter how hard the devil fights. Hold on. You will have your miracle. Praise the Lord.
We are entering a year of the Holy Ghost. I will tell the devil, we are dancing into 2023. <laughs> And please help me remind him. Say, Holy Spirit, please remember, you are the pastor of Fountain of Life Church. Say it one more time. Settle. Hear me, Fountain of Life. There is a dimension of grace wants to deposit even concerning the new that he's doing in this church i'm telling you this by prophecy there is a season ending in this church and a new season beginning hear what i'm telling you i'm speaking this to you by the spirit of god there is a season ending general has gone home but we are still here so that means the work continues and the last time I checked a lion cannot give birth to a goat because somebody here today they have conspired that you will not see today they thought they would witness your downfall. But he who sits in the heaven laughs. Look at us, devil, we are still standing. Because out of our belly shall flow. The day you gave your life to Jesus and the Holy Ghost entered within your being, that day you began to walk like Jesus walked. You have the authority that Jesus had. You are not ordinary. This week the Lord bless you. This week the Lord keep you. And so shall it be in Jesus' name, Amen. I hope you will never forget that there's a pastor in Fountain. His name is not Tyro. Tyro is a delegated authority. The pastor of Fountain is the Holy Spirit. I hope you know that. And that's why we are very confident. Did you hear me say it? We are very, very confident of the ministry and the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. You can put your hands together for Jesus. The Lord has been good to us. Hallelujah. As a church, as a people, we have been through, but God has always come through for us. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians 4, 8, it says we are at press on every side, but we are not what? We are here, we are standing. The message we have for you today is to encourage you that the God of Fountain of Life Church is able to make your heart to be at peace. Trust Him. Don't worry. He will come through for you. If Fountain of Life is standing here today, you have hope. There is nothing that can shake you. 
somebody wave unto God and say God will bless you because we have an assurance that you will always come through for us don't worry the Lord is coming for you hallelujah It doesn't matter what 
what I no, look like. No, 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 I freely give. I will love
stand on your feet. You see, as I sat there and I saw the video of my father, ah, for the fountain of life church, the devil thought we would not be here today. But we are here. From the depths of your soul, can you shout a hallelujah?
in a matter of minutes. We have to usher in 2024 right. I have a set of declarations, instructions, and prayers that we must pray. So we will start 2024 right. I'm looking at my time. I will ask you to sit down, but you probably stand up in the next 10 minutes. So very quickly, sit down. But we're going to get up to pray in about five minutes. Amen? You people can't sit down. As you hear people are tempting me, I have to do what I have to do. Amen? Very quickly, let's turn to 2 Kings, the sixth chapter. 2 Kings, the sixth chapter. While I was praying, I asked the Lord what he would have me say as we crossed over into a new year and he took me to 2 Kings, the sixth chapter. And as I began to read, he began to make some declarations and certain things that we must pray, giving us an insight in what our next year will be. It says, now the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, look, now the place where we live near you is too small. Somebody say too small. It is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan River and let each man take for there a being for the building. And let us make a place there for ourselves where we may live. And he answered, go. Somebody said, go. 
Then one said, please be willing to go with your servant. So he answered, I shall go. Verse 4. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down some of the trees. But it happened that as one was cutting down a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried out and said, oh no, my master, it was borrowed. The man of God said, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron axe head float. He said, pick it up for yourself. Then he reached out with his hand and took it. Let's go back to the beginning. As I began to read, the first thing the Lord showed me, he said, the sons of the prophets, that's what it says in verse 1. Now the sons of the prophets. Who are the sons of the prophets? There were those who came to learn, to serve under the tutelage of the prophet. They came to care for the prophet, to serve under him. They were stewards of the prophetic. The first thing the Lord will have me say to you about 2024. 2024 will be a year of the supernatural. In 2024, we will steward the supernatural. Now, on your feet, we're about to pray a prayer. The first prayer point. We're going to be praying with Joel 2, 38 to 30. Joel 2, 28 to 30. It says, it shall come about after this that I shall pour out my spirit on all mankind and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. I will show signs and wonders displaying my power in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. Our first prayer point. In 2024, the Lord will pour out His Spirit upon us. In 2024, your sons and daughters will prophesy. In 2024, your old men will dream dreams. In 2024, your young men will see visions. Open up your mouth and begin to declare. In 2024, I shall steward the supernatural. In 2024, the Lord will pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. In 2024, I shall receive vision. Though they think I am past my prime, I will dream dreams. Dreams that will be solutions to problems. The Lord shall fill my mouth with words of wisdom, with words of prophecy. He will pour out His Spirit upon us. In 2024, the supernatural will invade the natural. We shall be carriers of the Spirit. In 2024, open your mouth and declare about your 2024. We shall walk in the supernatural. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Now, in the same thing, it says, that verse, it says, look, now the place where we live is too small. You see, the sons of the prophets had outgrown where they lived. The Lord had added to them to a point where the place where they lived had become too small. Fountain, the Lord would have me say in 2024. The Lord is adding to us to the point where our houses shall become too small. 
He said, unprecedented increase. In 2024, expansion on every side. Now, this is the prayer we will pray with 1 Chronicles 4 to 10. Jabez cried. He cried to the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would indeed bless me and enlarge my border property and that your hand will be with me and you will keep me from evil so that it does not hurt me. And the Bible says God granted his request. Open up your mouth and begin to pray. In 2024, oh God, that you will indeed bless me. Father, enlarge my capacity. Father, enlarge my ability. Increase on every side. Supernatural expansion. He said it grew to the place where the house became too small. Father, in 2024, a house that shall become too small because you shall add to us on every side. We call increase from the north. We call increase from the south. We call increase from the east. We call increase from the west. Open up your mouth and declare it to your 2024. The houses became too small. Unprecedented increase. Supernatural increase. In 2024, expansion on every side. Increase, 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 increase. All around. In our family, in our business, everywhere we go, increase follows us. Because we enter a place, it must yield for us. We speak to the earth. We command it to yield. We speak to the heavens. We command it to yield. We speak to the depths of the sea. We command it to yield. Increase, increase, increase. Busting forth. We rapid increase on every side. Ikra tabaka. So shall it be in Jesus' name. The Bible says they grew to the point where their houses became too small. In the next verse, the second verse, it says this. He said to them, the prophet said, please let us go to the Jordan River and let each man take from there a beam for building and let us make a place there for ourselves that we may live and he said go and the Lord quickly reminded me of how we talked about the Jordan and how we said it was a separation between the flesh and the spirit the Bible says they went down to the Jordan to find a beam so that they could build their new house the next prayer point in 2024 we will build ourselves in the Holy Spirit this is the verse we shall pray with. Jude 1 to 20. Jude 1 20. It says this. But you beloved. Build yourselves. On the foundation of your most holy faith. Continually. Progress. Rise like an edifice. Higher. And higher. How? Pray for the next two minutes. Open up your mouth and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost in 2024. We shall build ourselves in the Holy Spirit. We shall go higher. We shall go higher like building edifices. We shall build ourselves in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. 
we shall be aware of you in 2024 we shall pray without ceasing we shall build ourselves we shall increase in faith we shall cut our ebra katapa for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty kenya brikatabaha when we do not know what to pray the bible says and the spirit prays through us and begins to make intercessions with groanings uh, that cannot be understood. Uh, I don't know what 2024 holds, uh, but I hold the one that holds 2024. Uh, and because he is the spirit, uh, he is the spirit of truth. Uh, he is my counselor. Uh, he is my advocate. Uh, he is my mainstay. Uh, he is my strengthener. Uh, he is my comforter. Uh, we shall build Ibre Kataba Yeba Kasaya Ibra Sakataya Yebosa Yebra Kandabo Sokotaha 2024. We shall build ourselves in the Holy Spirit. Yebra Kataba Yebre Sakataba Seha. We will pray like never before. Holy Spirit, ha. Holy Spirit, ha. Holy Spirit, ha. Yeah, So shall it be in Jesus' name. The third verse, it says this. Then one said, please be willing to go with your servant. And he answered, I shall go. You see, Elijah was God's servant. He represented the mouthpiece of God. He represented the presence of God in Israel. When Naaman was bedridden, when he was covered in leprosy, his slave said, I know a man of God in Samaria. If you go. He represented the presence of God. The fourth prayer point in 2024. Everywhere we go, we go with the presence of God. Our scripture we shall be praying with is Exodus 33, 14 to 15. This is what the Lord said to Moses. And the Lord said, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. 2024 shall be your year of rest. My presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. How? By bringing you and the people into the promised land. 2024, you are entering your promised land. And Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with me, do not lead me up from here. 2024, this is our prayer. Anywhere your presence does not go, I do not want to go. Open up your mouth and pray. Anywhere you do not lead me, I shall not go. If your presence does not go with me, I shall not go. I shall hear a voice that says, this is the way, and I shall walk in it. The voice of a stranger, I will not follow. Open up your mouth and decree, 2024, anywhere your presence does not lead me, I will not go. Anything you do not give me, I do not want. Any door you do not open, I will not walk through. Anything that comes from you, I shall receive. For the blessings of God, make it rich and add that no sorrow. If it quest, if it the price is peace, I don't want it. If the cost of the opportunity is my peace, I do not want it. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh God. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Anywhere you do not send me, I will not go. Open up your mouth and decree. 
anywhere you don't send me. If your presence does not go with me, I shall not go. Lead me in 2024. You are my good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Anyway, your presence does not lead me. I shall not go. So shall it be in Jesus' name. The next thing in the fourth verse, he says that Elisha, he went with them. And they came to the Jordan and they cut down some of the trees. And the Lord said to me, they were trees at the river Jordan. What they needed to build was already provided for them. The fifth prayer point, in 2024, you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. A prayer is Psalms 1 to 3. And he will be like a tree. You shall be like a tree. Firmly planted. Firmly planted. Nothing will uproot you from your position in 2024. You shall be fed by the streams of water which yield its fruit in its season. In 2024, you shall not miss your season. By the rivers of water which yield its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. Your leaf shall not wither. Amen. And whatever, somebody say whatever. whatever. Whatever he does, he prospers and comes to maturity. Open up your mouth and pray. In 2024, I shall be like a tree, firmly planted by the rivers of water. In 2024, I shall bring forth every fruit uh, in my season. Uh. In 2024, uh, my leaves shall not wither. Uh. Nothing shall uproot me from my position. Uh. In 2024, uh, I shall come into full maturity of blessings. Uh. Everything the Lord has stored up for me, uh, I shall receive. Uh. I shall be like a tree uh, planted by the rivers of water. For his own measure, I shall come into full maturity. Every plan, every purpose, every desire, I shall see it come to pass. In 2024, everything God has earmarked for me, I shall receive in my season. In the name of Jesus, over my family, uh, over my business, uh, over my endeavors, uh, I shall bring forth fruit. Uh, everything I do, uh, everywhere my hands touch, uh, I must see fruit uh, because I will be fruitful. Uh, I will multiply, uh, I will subdue. Uh, Like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So shall it be in Jesus' name. They went by the river and they cut from the trees. You see, the trees that they required for them to build for their expansion was made available. In 2024, it shall be a year of provision. I'll say it again for somebody. Everything that you need for 2024 has already been provided. In the name of Jesus. This is our prayer point, Philippians 4.19. And 
my God and your God and your God will liberally will lavishly he will liberally supply he will fill unto full there will be nothing missing and nothing lacking he will fill unto full until every need according to what according to his riches not your riches according to his riches not what the economy is saying according to his riches not what your bank account is saying according to his riches not your net worth he says in 2024 you may not see the wind you may not see the rain but your valley shall be filled with water open up your mouth and begin to decree 2024 and my God shall supply and my God shall supply and my God shall liberally shall lavishly shall generously supply all my needs, all my needs, fill unto full. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing lacking. Provision shall be made for you in Jesus' name. We have about 10 more minutes into the new year. The next thing, very quickly, it says, 2 Kings 6 verse 5, it says, but as it happened, as one of them was cutting a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried out and said, oh no, my master, it was borrowed. And the Lord showed me, he said he cried out that it was borrowed. In other words, he did not have an axe, but when he needed one, he found someone that was willing to borrow him what he lacked. In other words, he found help when he needed it. You see, that same axe that he borrowed fell into the water. And again, the man of God asked him a question. Where did it fall? So when he needed help again, he found help when he needed it. The next prayer point. In 2024, you will not be without help. Our prayer point. Psalm 121. Psalm 121. Psalm 121, 1 to 8. He says, I will lift up my eyes. I will lift up my eyes up unto the hills of Jerusalem. From where cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made the heavens and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber. He won't slumber briefly, nor sleep soundly. Why? The Lord, the Lord, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade, is your protection on your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day. The moon will not smite you by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your life in 2024. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in. In everything that you do, from this time forth and forever, open up your mouth and say, begin to pray. In the mayor of 2024, every time I need help, help will show up for me. I shall be known as the one that God has helped. Divine help is my right. Divine help is my portion. Wherever I have a need, the Lord will show up for me. 2024, I shall not be without help. I shall be known as the one God helped. I shall be known as the one God has helped. When they look at me, 
when they look at my life, I shall be known as the one helped by God. I shall never be without help in my finances, in my business, in my family, in every area of my life. My children shall not be without help because he does not sleep. The one who keepeth Israel does not slumber or sleep. I shall not be without help. So shall it be in Jesus' name. The next thing, in still 2 Kings 6 verse 6, the man of God asked him a question. He said, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut off a stick and threw it in there. And he made the iron axe head float. You see, Elisha, he asked confidently where it fell without concern or worry. He had unwavering faith. The next prayer point for 2024, you shall walk in unwavering faith. Our prayer point is Hebrews 10, 23. It says this, let us cease and hold tightly the confession of our hope and faith without what? Without wavering. Why? For he He is not a man that he should lie. For he who promised is what? Reliable. He is the rock that cannot fail. (laughs) He is trustworthy. And he is faithful to his word. The Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. For the next one minute, open up your mouth and begin to decree. In 2024, I shall walk in unwavering faith. I shall not be moved by what I see. I shall not be moved by what I hear. I shall only be moved by what the word of God says. In 2024, I will allow God to be true. And every other man be a liar. I shall not be moved. I shall have unwavering faith. Regardless of what I see, he is the rock that cannot fail. He is the one that is ever present in time of trouble. Open up your mouth and decree. In 2024, I shall have unwavering faith. Unwavering faith. In Jesus' name. We have about four more minutes. I'm looking at my time. We have two more prayer points. You see, the man whose axe fell, he believed that he had lost the axe head forever. But he recovered that which he had lost. For somebody here, in 2024, it shall be a year of recovery and restoration. Our scripture is Joel 2.25. Look at what the Lord God says. And I will compensate you. I will compensate you for the years. The one that can redeem the time. I shall compensate you for the years. When the Lord turned around the captivity of Zion, I shall compensate you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten. The creeping locust, the stripping locust, everywhere you have been stripped down and ignoring locust. He says, my great army, which I will send amongst you. Everywhere that I have lost everything, in 2024, I shall pursue. I shall overtake. I shall recover all. Open up your mouth for the next 20 seconds and begin to decree. Begin to decree. It shall be my year of restoration. Everything that I've lost, everywhere where there has been delay, everywhere there has been a setback, it's been a setup for my come up. It shall be my year of recovery and restoration. 
Yeblakataba. In Jesus' name. We have about two more minutes. And the last prayer point. The Bible says that the man of God said to him, when the axe had floated, he said in verse 7, he said, pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand and took it. The Lord said to me that he possessed his possession. It is 11.59. <laughs> the last prayer point. As we walk into this new year. In 2024. I will possess my possession. And in the scripture is Isaiah 60. 20 to 21. Isaiah 60. 20 to 21. Your son. Put it up there. Your sun will no longer set. Nor will your moon wane. For the Lord will be your everlasting light. And the days of your morning shall be over. Then all your people will become uncompromisingly and consistently righteous. Why? They will possess their land forever. The branch of my planting. The works of my hands. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. to 2024 it is a year of signs and wonders for behold I am the children that the Lord has given unto me are for signs and want us in Israel. Beloved, in 2024, the Lord will make you a sign that will make people wonder in the name of Jesus. He says, and signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. The earth is waiting for the earnest manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. In 2024, you shall be a walking sign. Everywhere you enter, the ground must yield for you. In the name of Jesus, everything you touch must yield for you. The Lord shall make you a sign and wonder in this nation. In the name of Jesus. Look at us, devil. We are still standing. I think, seeing as we have entered, for the next five minutes, or the next seven minutes, I think it's only right that we praise. Gospel for us, how do you feel? Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. Please give them the microphone for the next 10 minutes. Just take us in a round of praise. Give them the microphone. Look at your neighbor and say, Happy 2024. Tell somebody that 2024 was a great year. Really quickly, really quickly, bring out the promises. I need to bless the promises so that we can begin to distribute it. At the same time, they're reminding me we have to take offerings. At the same time, while we praise in the spirit of gratitude and thanksgiving, if you find the offering basket, just put your offering in there. The Lord bless you as you give in Jesus' name. 
bring out the promises, bring out the promises. Look at your neighbor and say, Happy 2024! Find somebody Ooh. else and say 2024 was a great year. Tell somebody that the Lord will make me a sign and wonder this year. Father, we thank you for the promises. We thank you that your promises are yes and amen. We thank you that you are not a man that you should lie or the son of man that you should repent. Everything you say, you watch over your word to perform it. Because you are God all by yourself. You search high and search low. Where you could not find anyone greater than yourself. You swore by yourself. You are accountable only to yourself. And you extol your word above your name. So we hold on to your word. Every promise you have spoken concerning us in 2024. We will see it come to pass in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree and declare that every promise picked today will be a direct message from the throne of grace to everyone that picks it today. It shall be a light unto their feet and a lamp unto their path in Jesus' name. And Father, we bless the offering as well. Father, for everyone who has given, we ask that you bless them, you provide for them, you expand their territory on every side, in Jesus' name. For those online who are joining us, we pray the same prayer for you. You can pick your promises online as, uh, as well. And we say, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Father, for those who wanted to give, but didn't have the ability, we thank you that this is a new year. And you are Jehovah Jireh. You shall be their provider. They shall never lack this year. They shall be like trees planted by the rivers of water. We seal it under the blood. And we say that it is so in Jesus' name. Are you, are you, are you, are you guys ready? Are you ready? Ushers. Right, okay, so, so, so the ushers are like, please, we should help them because they're the ones that will do offering and do promises. So we'll do offering for like five minutes and then after which we'll do promises, amen? But all join by praising for the next 10 minutes, amen? Are you guys ready? Almost. Take us in, take us in, take us in. Okay, they're not ready yet. What? Oh, 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 yes, give me, give me, give me them. Also, also as well, for those, we have 2024 uh, memorabilia available. If you want to start your new year, we have stickers, 2024, a uh, year of sign and wonders available. We have stickers for, this is like, what, computer stickers or laptops, <laughs> thank you, sorry. Laptop stickers, so everywhere, just remind yourself as you are walking, 2024, my year of sign and wonders. We have, what are these things called? Pop, pop, pop back, eh? Snap back. Pop snap. Pop sockets. Eh, eh, thank you, I'm not old. Pop sockets for your phones. Every time, you know, as you are calling, as you are talking, as you are talking, 2024. Reminding yourself, it's my year of signs and wonders. Also, we have, uh, we came ready. We have notepads. As you are journaling all your testimonies, as you are taking notes, reminding yourself, 2024, our year of signs. Uh, we have pen. <laughs> as you are writing, I decree and declare everything, my year of signs and wonders. Amen? So all of this is available. Hey, hey, Pastor Tony. What happened? Leave me. Go away. No. No, thank you. Be going. Don't come again. Where was I? Yeah. Thank you. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes, sir. 
This is our year Whoa. of signs and yes. wonders. Yes. Let's go. One, two. One.
2024 was a great year. Find somebody else and say neighbor. 2024 was a blessed year. If you believe it, give God a shout. All right, all right, all right, all right. So we have a couple things to take care of before we go. Everybody be seated for the next 10 minutes. And then we're out of here. We close at 12.30, correct? Yes, all right, we still have time. We have about 12 minutes. All right, now we have entered into 2024. God has brought us the promise keeper. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. 
One more time, just sing Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. Very quickly, if you know that you are here today and this God that we speak of you do not know, you cannot start 2024 in the year of signs and wonders. You must know the one who makes you the sign and wonder. He says, I lay before you life and death. Choose life. So that you may live. God wants to do so much in you, through you, for you this year. But it starts with a decision. So if you are here and you know that you have not given your life to Christ. Don't say I'll do it tomorrow. Do it today. Start the year right. If you're here and you haven't made that decision really quickly, before we end the service, grab your bags, grab your Bibles, whatever you need. The Lord is waiting for you here. I surrender all. I Who needs to make this decision now? Come on, come on, come on, come on. We'll wait for you. Come, come out, come out. The Lord wants to meet with you now. I surrender. And if you're in the overflow, please go to the front of wherever you may be. A pastor standing in front to receive you as well. My blessed Savior, I surrender. Sing on to Jesus. up in the come down we'll wait for you come down come down we'll wait for you you in the section come down we'll wait for you and trust his presence Somebody gave God a condition. It's very interesting. You said, I'm not going to come out unless you guess my favorite color. He said, your favorite color is pink. So come out. (laughs) 
That's interesting. <laughs> I was like, huh? You know, when I hear God, it's just like, wait, what? I like, yes, everyone color is pink. Okay. That's how intentional he is about us. I surrender. Oh. We'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. Sis, could you sing, we, we wait on you? Could you sing that? Sis. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. There they are. We wait. Please stretch your hands to pray. But there's still one more person. We'll wait on you. Come on. It's not too late. Come out. Touch me with your hands. Jesus. Please don't let me go. Who are you? The same. Touch me with your hand, Jesus. Please 
please don't let me go. There you are. The same way I came. She was running from upstairs. Touch me with your hand. Jesus. Stretch your hands and begin to pray over these ones. Father, we thank you. The God who sees, the God who hears, the God who knows. The one who leaves the 99 and comes after the one. The one whose plans and purpose for our lives will come to pass once we submit ourselves unto your hands. Father, these ones have come before you today submitting their lives, submitting their ways, their will unto you, O oh God. Please say after me, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you that you shed your blood on the cross of Calvary and you paid the price and redemption for my soul. I thank you that your blood cleanses me today. I know now that old things are passed away and all things have become new. You are the Lord of my life. You are the captain of my ship. You are the shepherd of my soul. I renounce the devil and all his ways. From this moment on, according to the confession of my faith, I am yours from now till eternity. Father, we seal their confession under the matchless blood of Jesus, and we say that it is so in Jesus' name. I pray that this marks the beginning of the best years of their lives. For those in the overflow and online as well, I pray, oh God, as they have made the decision, the same applies to them so in Jesus' name. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. All right, if you can do me a favor, if you just turn around, there's a lovely lady in a black shirt. She'll go with you and get your details and let you come back very quickly. Please appreciate all these lovely people who made the decision. Look at that. Appreciate them as they go. Amen, amen. It is 12.32. Look at your neighbor and say, welcome to 2024. Okay, if, if you haven't picked a promise, just indicate, wave your hands. If you don't have a promise, if you didn't get a promise, let me, you did not get a promise? Anybody else did not? Okay, another person here. We have some people, ushers, please. I see some hands being waved. Some people didn't get promises. If you did not get a promise, please wave your hands. The ushers will get you a promise. Those in the overflow, if you are waving your hands, well, audiovisual isn't, if you can show me the overflow. Oh, is there anything too hard for our God? Casey. But it's just black. Who is there? Oh, it's, uh, that's outside. Well, Casey, I'm looking at myself. Casey, it's a new year. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, if you want to pick a promise for those online. You can scan the QR code. Okay, so, all right. Did everybody get a promise? Where's that? Okay, cool. Where's the other one? Okay. It's okay. You have tried. You showed me one. It's okay. That's, we'll be here till next year. Amen? All right. So, if everyone got a promise? Anyone else didn't have a promise? Everybody have a promise? Everybody promise? 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 Fantastic. Okay. I think we're done. Fantastic. Oh, before, before... There are buses available. Please put the list up. All right. Mal, do I have to say everything? Thank you. Because sometimes some of these names be trying to trip me up. God no go shame us in 2024. <laughs> Amen. So buses are available. If you see your route, please feel free, jump on a bus, and you will get home safely in Jesus' name. Please stand.
as we say the first blessing in 2024. This year the Lord bless you. This year the Lord keep you. This year the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. This year shall be a year of the supernatural. This year you shall be helped by God. This year you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You shall bring forth fruit in your season in the name of Jesus. This year everything you put your hands to do will prosper in the name of Jesus. This year you will overtake, you will pursue, you will recover all in the name of Jesus. Everywhere the cracker and the locust and the palmer worm has stolen, the Lord shall restore to you in the name of Jesus. This year you will steward the supernatural. This year you shall have unwavering faith. This year signs and wonders shall follow you everywhere you go. When you enter a place, you announce the blessings of God. Favor surrounds you like a shield this year. In the name of Jesus. This year you shall not be without help. When you call for one, a thousand will answer. In the name of Jesus. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand by your right hand side. But no evil shall come near you. No plague shall come near your dwelling place. In the name of Jesus. This year the Lord will expand your territory. Increase on every side. Net busting miracles this year. In the name of Jesus, this year the Lord will give you a mouth that cannot be contested. That will cause your enemies to be your friend. In the name of Jesus, this year he will prepare a table before you. In the presence of your enemies, he shall anoint your head with oil and your cup shall run over. In the name of Jesus, this year he will do exceedingly. He will do abundantly. He will do above what you can ask, think, or imagine. This year, the Lord shall supply all your needs. Fill unto full. He shall supply all your needs. Lavishly, generously, according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This year, no evil shall see you. Calamity will not see you. Affliction shall not see you. Death shall not see you. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over your life, over your household, over your business, over everything that concerns you. When they see the blood, they must pass over. In the name of Jesus, this year the Lord will take you from glory to glory. This year the Lord will take you from grace to grace. This year the Lord will take you from strength to strength. Signs and wonders shall be your everyday reality. In the name of Jesus, from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from strength to strength, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Look at your neighbor and say, 2024 was a great year. Find someone and say, 2024 was a blessed year. Find someone that said 2024 was a year of ease. Find someone that said 2024 was a year of acceleration. Find someone that said 2024 was a year of elevation. If you believe it, say amen. If you receive it, shout amen. No evil shall come near your dwelling place as you go home in Jesus' name. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Pause. So prayer and fasting. Wait, wait. Calm down. Relax. We are going to do prayer and fasting. But I know that we are still in this. So we won't do it this week. We'll start next week. Amen. Amen.
Prayer and fasting will start. Amen. Amen. Where were we? Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And so sin shall not have dominion over us. For the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us and quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Find three people and tell them Happy New Year! God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I'm gonna see you soon, I never see you.